I wanted to kick off 2023 with more video podcasts on the road. From Dallas, Texas, I headed north on Interstate 35 to do my first podcast on this trip with Bryce of Schmidt Motos of Salina, Kansas. I started following Bryce a few years back when he finished his panhead chopper. From the flaked out candy gold paint, the one-off stainless frame, to the manually machined cylinder, Bryce made it all happen under this roof. There was a handful of custom motorcycles within this shop. One of the ones that stood out to me the most was this Sportster, a cafe racer inspired, turbocharged badass. Bryce runs Schmidt Motos with the help of his girlfriend, Denise. Together they do everything from general maintenance to one-off custom builds. I'm excited to kick off this Midwest podcast trip. Please check out our sponsors in the description and thank you for watching the Fast Life podcast. So let's, uh, let's go back Let's talk about how you go from, how do you get the bug to start creating, you know, what you've got now, these bikes and all the other fabrication skills you acquired? Like, did that come from family? Did that come from interest in high school? Yeah, I mean, I probably got my first dirt bike. Um, It was an Enduro when I was 13 or 14. Yeah. And I always wanted to change it, but I was really good at taking shit apart, but I couldn't put it back together. Mm -hmm. And, but that bug always stayed with me. So, eventually, I got good at putting things together too yeah and then with my machining background i got really good at machining and prototyping and metalworking so then it all kind of just came together so what was the uh you were working on the dirt bikes and stuff like that i mean how i mean these machines in here aren't something you fall into like you got to have like some kind of connection to get to where like this isn't in somebody's garage you know no um (laughs) Man, I, like, lived in the dumpsters at work because they would throw away material and scrap and junk and tooling that was no good. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would just pay scrap price for it, you know, like eight or nine cents a pound and kind of fix it, Mm -hmm. reshape it, make it work for what I was doing. Okay. So I collected. I I was all, like, once a week living in the scrap metal dumpster to get shit that I could use if I fixed it. Okay, that makes Mm -hmm. sense, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I never really looked into... uh you know, when I was growing up, like, I didn't get a chance to, like, ride dirt bikes and mm-hmm. stuff. I was a sports kid. Yeah. And um, it just it just never really occurred to me. And I, I've said it on the podcast a million times, but Fast and the Furious changed me. <laughs> I remember leaving the movie theater yeah, after that. Yeah, just ass. <laughs> <laughs> My Nissan four-cylinder banging ears. Hell, yeah. <laughs> that's what it was that's all about. Funny. But that's what, that's what kind of uh, – that – there's parts of that that movie as cheesy as most of sure, it is. Sure. There's parts of it that I fell in love with. Absolutely. And I most importantly the the scene where they they have all these parts laid out and they're about right. to start building the right. Supra. I'm like that looks oh, yeah. fun. That looks like <laughs> you know it came in all burnt and then you know obviously they didn't really do it. But you sure, know, sure. It just it, at the time, like I said, I was going to school to do architecture and I just mm-hmm. did not have a connection between what we were doing on the computer and what was right. actually being created in real life. Making something, creating something just gives you a different, exactly. you know, feel. Yeah. And I mean, as I've gotten older, I've gotten to know a lot more f- guys that are machinists and engineers. 
and much much like you know much like pinstripers yeah are some of the best painters because they they're very precise right right machinists become very very good builders because of that same precision same thing. right oh yeah and it's definitely sometimes it's you know double edged sword because you are critical when you shouldn't have to be critical so yeah you can't shut it off either yeah. you're that way or you're not that way yeah and uh, trust me i'm i'm one of those ones that i'm trying to adopt some of those uh mm-hmm. those qualities and characteristics to kind of help hone my quality right. if you will right. you know Absolutely. what i mean so it all goes into the next stage you know yeah i think there's validity to this and there's also kind of like some holes that you can poke but <laughs> I heard a saying a long time ago. It's like, how you do... poke a lot of holes. Okay, so yeah. I've seen them. Around yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All of them. There we go. Now it's party. Uh, and basically, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yep. You ever heard that? Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, like I said, you can poke some holes in that here and there, sure. but... For the most part, it's like, you know, when, when I would get apprentices or people that want to come work with me, yeah. I'd hand them a broom. And I was like, let me see how you sweep. Right, right. You know what I mean? If you sweep like a like you don't give a fuck. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. Then you don't give a fuck. Sure. You're not going to do anything right. Or that makes sense. I mean, you could probably get honed into doing something right. But right. I remember my first day on the job at a shop and they handed me a broom and they did that to me. And <laughs> I felt like I, I had so much confidence. Like, oh, dude, I can do this all fucking day. And right. then. You look back and you can still see you dust see everywhere. All your shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, with that being said, it's like, you know, what did you do in high school? Was it anything to do with this type of stuff? Or did you have um, any vocational classes that you took? No. Um, in high school, I was always tinkering. I was always making something. Yeah. Because uh, my old man was a machinist. So oh, okay. I <laughs> there was <it> is. <laughs> always messing with stuff. Like I said, I was not good at putting it together, but I, yeah. I had the ideas. Like I knew what I wanted to do mm-hmm. and then slowly started building some skill. Um, I think I was like 18. I bought like a Honda Rebel. It was the most pimped out Honda Rebel <laughs> you've ever seen. <clears throat> I mean, I made stainless risers, exhaust, everything. Nice. That was the coolest thing on the planet. It wasn't. I mean, I would like to have it today, but it, you know. Yeah. Well, but I mean, it got me started. Yeah, you know? I would say that it's got to be cool to have something like that to tinker on and create Absolutely, something. On. Yeah. I mean, did you know how to weld already and stuff no, like that? No, I had no idea. None. But, like, when I went to work, so right out of high school, I started at a machine shop. It was mm-hmm. basically like a shit monkey. I yeah. scraped gaskets, drove forklifts, built boxes, and then I moved to an apprentice. And then mm-hmm. I slowly moved from apprenticeship on up. But I never said I couldn't do something. But they're like, hey, can you run a lathe? I was like, absolutely. Yeah. I had no fucking idea. I would just kind of figure it out, or I'd ask someone to help me out, or yeah. But I never said no. I was, I was yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably lied, and I could for do sure, it, but I couldn't. Eventually, I learned. Yeah, the lathe is always like the the funnest thing to watch. You're right. You know what I mean? The like things it's, you can do. It's pretty amazing. It seems like anything, like even when they do wood stuff on lathes yeah. and stuff, like it's always that engaging, like sure. real or TikTok. Because the parts spinning. It's not yeah. like a mill. You know. Yeah, exactly. You just see like. Things getting shaped out and whatnot. I, I don't know. I've always had a fascination to it, but it's like such a huge machine that can make some of the most simplistic parts. <laughs> exactly. Of you know, exactly. wheel spacers, basically. Right. You know what I mean? Basically, a lathe can reproduce itself almost with the right for real. Know, equipment. Oh shit! That's. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, like I said, I didn't really grow up. I grew up in a body shop, so my obviously fell into the family business. Sure, I guess sure. you'd say same um, thing. Yeah. Yeah, so fuck you, Dad. <laughs> Wish I could have been a machinist. <laughs> Why don't you could teach me something cool? <laughs> yeah, he probably didn't even graduate. But no, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's a weird one. I also, I didn't catch into bikes that very early on either, man. Like, yeah. it took me, it took bikes a while. Well, you said you didn't even drink a beer to your, beer to your 29, so yeah, you were yeah. a late bloomer. Yeah, I had kids early, man. Or I had oh, a well, kid yeah. early, and then uh, gotcha. I had a crackhead mom, yeah. so... And yeah, it'll slow things yeah, down. Yeah, it bit. just made me, you know, it's like a, what it did was it forced me to, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't a partier when I was young either. Yeah. So I just pretty much just put my nose to the, my job, my yeah. work. And at the time, I was like, a, I was fascinated on being an artist, whatever that meant. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I just wanted to be an artist. Like, I wanted to have, you know, I, I, I tattooed for a little bit. Sure, I fucking sure. did a lot of fine art painting. It's like I was looking for anything in the Self-expression. art. Self-expression. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was ex- inspired by a lot of people, but I didn't really, I wasn't there enough to have my own thing. Sure. It was just a reproduction of what I see. 
Right. And right. Uh, that makes sense. And then, man, I, I swear it's like when motorcycles was work for me for every mm-hmm. for, for the longest time, and then it became my hobby, right? So right. it's like. Then I didn't want to paint anymore. I just wanted to go ride bikes, ride bikes and drink beer. <laughs> That's and the funnest part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's there's different aspects to it, I guess. But I don't know, man. It's it's one of those things where I'm glad that, that I found all this stuff because it's opened right. oh, my same. eyes to things Absolutely. I wouldn't have tried. You know sure. what I'm saying? I get it. So. I get it completely. So you, when did you finally upgrade from the Honda Rebel? Uh, Honda Rebel. <laughs> man, when did I get rid of that? And... I think 06 or 07, I finally got a Sportster. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what it was. So, 06, was it a new one or an old school one? No, it was a fuel injected. So it was 07. 07, yep. like a, I think 883, it might, mine was just an 883 low. My mom, my yeah. first Harley was a Nightster that was my okay. mom's. <laughs> right on. And she let me take the payments <laughs> over. There you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But it was 07 as well. So I that's, do have, um, like, the first bike I painted framed work all that stuff on the other side that's yeah. a uh, xs 650 a 72 xs oh, okay and i put the xs in a sportster frame the harley shop was getting rid of yeah you kill that yeah yeah right. yeah. No. yeah the the people that are listening to this in audio what is the they're gonna be like, coming in we're in kansas there's some uh, <laughs> inclement weather <laughs> just put a headphone caution sign on your yeah. video what happens is they'll be in their like truck listening, oh, and yeah, then it'll yeah. just like I get loud it. and shit. You know what I'm saying? It'll shut off. It's all right. It's no worries. <laughs> but yeah, um, you said you got a Sportster was the first one. Like that was the first like uh, really new bike I bought was yeah. a Sportster, and it's cool and all. But buying something and kind of making it yourself is two different things. You have a yeah. different love for it. So oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. What? What were some things that, like, did you buy that bike with the intention of doing some things to it? Or oh, yeah. Just... Man, I already had it taken apart, I think, when I got home. Oh, shit. So yeah. I built a set of bars, machined a set of risers up, just a different set, uh, some stainless steel solid struts, slammed it down. It was, yeah. like, seven-inch eye-to-eye, like, low-low, ripped the wires out, you know, yeah. type low. That was the, the style, though, yeah, then, yeah, too, though. Yeah, you know definitely I mean? around here, just kind of Bob the Fender. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but... Solid bike, rode the shit out of it. Sports are as tough as bike Harley's ever made. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> ever. I'm, they stopped making them, though, now, I guess. Yeah, they're not the real Sportsters. Yeah, they're not the real ones. <laughs> well, what about, like, what was any of, like, the biker build-out stuff kind of uh, inspirational to you in that time frame? Oh, or yeah, were yeah, you already... definitely. Uh, I mean, I loved it. You know, I always tuned in, watched it, bought yeah. the books and all that nonsense. Yeah. Um, Billy Lane, I always dug his style a lot, uh-huh. so... Yeah, I mean, I, I ate that stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know if I would, I mean, I watched it all, like I said, I was telling you my story earlier, uh, being in it, but I just, I never had a connection to Harleys until sure. like sure. 07, 08 and whatnot, and then, you know, the Sportster fell on my lap, and then, you know, I used to build a lot of sport bikes or customize yeah. a lot of sport bikes, and my whole customer base went to big wheels from okay. sport bikes, so I followed them in the big wheels, and then I f- started riding a road glide, and then I fell in love with right, traveling on bikes, right. and that's how shit changed for me and whatnot. But um, I don't know, man. It's, the 2000s was a different time, man. Oh, yeah, it, definitely, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> I did I'd like the old Japanese four-cylinder stuff. Like, oh, yeah. That was a huge – we can get them here for, you know, 300 bucks. Yeah. Or 500 bucks, you can pick a bike up, cafe it, or yeah. chopper of some sort, and – you can have a pretty rad bike for under a thousand bucks back then, so mm. that's that was one of my those things. KZ one thousands. Those, those are monsters, bikes were, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, they actually got a. They look pretty good just yeah. out of the box, like <laughs> yeah, police bike. Awesome, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> no, that's rad, man. I, I, uh, I mean, I was I was doing like the Busas and shit like that. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. straight biker boy stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But <laughs> ah, Lawrence Fishburne style. Yeah, <laughs> call me Smoke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What was the scene like up here? I mean, you said you grew up in, in Salina. Is that? Uh, yeah, Salina, like? Kansas. Okay. Um, it's a different scene. It's more of an old school bike scene. Like I said, we don't have the Dyna Bro performance style. <clears throat> We've got like the low slung cruisers, um, a lot of bagger stuff. That doesn't really excite me. Yeah. You know, old man style. Yeah. I get it, but I don't know. 
Yeah. I'd rather have more horsepower and less speakers. <laughs> true, true, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess for those those older bagger guys here, if they want to go somewhere, they got to... They just kind of, you know, we got a lot of bars, so it's... Yeah, hop to hop, know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that That's always conducive to, like, the chopper scene, too, but I think as they got mm-hmm. older, they just couldn't deal with, Well, like, that's one thing I, I always hate hearing, like, oh, it's a nice bar hopper, and I'm like, man, that's bullshit. It's like, you know how many miles I have on my hardtails? I was yeah. like, you can ride the fuck out of these things. I don't know. There's like a weird mindset around you can't really ride a hardtail. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. They I'm, can't, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ride a bagger from, you know, across town. Yeah, they got a trailer but, from here to start. Just. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, nah, hardtails, it's just raw. It's simple. It's a motorcycle, yeah. and that's it. No, I love it, man. I think it's a, <clears throat> it's a good-looking vibe. I have, I've, only, I've ridden one hardtail my whole life. Yeah. And not far enough to say that I actually ridden one, you know? <laughs> right. It's got to be a skinny tire hardtail, though. Like, the big fat tires, that's too much cushion. Yeah, that makes <clears> sense. And you might as well just have a soft tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what? soft tails aren't choppers. I don't care how much you do to them. <laughs> true, true. I, I, I've i always wondered, like, I, I like the idea of just doing, you know, like, uh, there's a lot of different people that make a lot of different styles of bikes, right? But sure. I, like I told you earlier, man, I'm I'm so enthralled right now with like that 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 tough chopper look you know what yeah. i mean yeah there's and something pure about it yeah there, it is and but there's also like you know i was thinking about that on the drive up here um and i was thinking about like a lot of the bikes out of california like the more hardtails yeah and it feels like they kind of lean more i guess it, it's this is a general statement so it's not like a it's it's generalization right, right? so I feel like a lot of them kind of just stick with like old style frames that they just kind of sure, would hardtail sure. or, or they want a 48 frame that had the pogo right, seat right, and right. just go with that, you know? Yeah, but, I don't know. I mean, I guess traditionally it wouldn't be a crazy rake usually and it's not crazy long mm-hmm. and you never see anything old school over 150 mm-hmm. wide tire, you know? It's all, it's True. kind of a skinny bike, kind of a nimble skinny bike. Yeah. So... Well, on your what did you name this one the the one in the deal? Uh, not real. I don't really have a name for it. Yeah, I never it. really I don't the name know. things too. <laughs> I don't. I don't really do that. Yeah, <laughs> unless it just comes really easy, like the turbo bikes, the turbo bike, and, yeah. or the digger, because that's just a digger chop. So okay. that's the style. Yeah. So what when you were building this bike? Huh? I mean, it has a. It's it honestly has a lot of different flavor on it. Now yeah. that I was just oh, yeah. walking through it yeah, and checking definitely. it out, because online when I when I first saw it online a couple of times, I would look at it like I didn't notice the cylinder thing until oh, yeah. you brought it up earlier. Sure, sure yeah, right. And then I, I noticed how, like you were saying to me, how you built one billet cylinder, right, and then kept right. one stock just to kind of contrast it and and kind of ask a question is why, you know? Yeah. Because if it was just two billets, you'd be like, oh, that guy just bought two billet cylinders and put it on a pan head. Yeah. Well, now they ask, and it's, yeah, I made the front one. That's my design. Mm-hmm. And then the rear one's the original. And the front one, I just, I actually just kind of, I didn't even make a print. I just did it all in my head. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> every, there's no numbers. It's just 100%. Just did it in my head and machined it. On and these, all on manual machines, too. Yeah, manual machines. Yeah. Damn. So I can, yeah. How long did it take? Um, about 115 hours from a chunk of seven and a half inch billet to polished and done and on the bike. Well, that's probably why you only did one. Uh, that <laughs> might be the reason I only did one. <laughs> yeah, 115 hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Trust me, yeah. So, I mean, getting into that, though, like, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't the first build. What was the first, like, all-out build that you kind of, like, took on as a project um the, the cb digger? 750 digger that okay. i did for michael lichter show nice yeah what year was that that, that he asked you to do the show 2018 18 and i built that bike in two weeks because he called me and said hey we had someone back out can you yeah. build a bike that no one's seen and get it here and i said yeah nice so that's coming that, yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's answering that the call right there yeah exactly exactly so have you always like wanted to do a digger was that something that um, kind of yeah, like yeah i like I like the old school style stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I found that front. I did not build that front end that's on it. I found that in a barn, mm-hmm. and I had it hanging on the wall in my garage. And then when he asked me if I could build a bike, I was like, I have the perfect front end to build a bike around. So <laughs> that thing's like 60 degrees rake. It's pretty yeah. rad, but super low slung. Mm. Yeah, I was looking at that. Fucking the pipes are. It's a mo- There's zoomies. Yeah, pie cut <laughs> zoomies. <laughs> you should hear it. We'll start it up. It's fucking wild. <laughs> it's gnarly. How is it riding something like that, though? Like It's not bad. Um, the drag slick on the back's pretty bouncy. You okay. know, like real, real bouncy. Um, 
so it's not rough. It's not rough. What about like, you know, because back in the day, uh, they used to like when they would do wider tire yeah. tires. They didn't have them, so they right. put car tires on. Yeah, them. Yeah, um, it'd be hard to turn. There's still there's still pretty good radius to the tire, so there's yeah. some lean angle. It's not like a hard ninety. Okay, it's not bad. I mean, you don't rip around. It's not you know, yeah, CBR or something ripping around <laughs> corners. It's a <laughs> you still got to be careful. Yeah, so you just pretty much got asked to do the show, and then you had a front end just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Did you build the frame and everything yeah, around Yeah, I made it? the frame. You pretty much have to on something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I bought The only thing I saved off the original Honda was the neck with the VIN number, mm. and then stuck it in the lathe and got rid of all the ugly shit, and then yeah. put it in the frame jig and started making everything off of it. Nice. Hmm? How do you even, like, know how to, like, where do you, is it just through, I, I'm trying to shape my question right here for this, but basically... To even get to the point of like building a frame, like how much and how, how, I mean, you got to have some right, years right. into fabrication by this point to even kind of start kinda to do that. The first thing I do when I, I have an idea of an idea of what, yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, in order to get a bike to set right, you already have to know what wheels and tires you want to run. Yeah. And then I set wheels and tires and then I set the wheelbase and then I make everything off of that. Yeah. Cause all of a sudden when you're done with your frame, you decide you want a different wheel. It could sit different. Change everything. So I yeah. always make sure I do my wheels and tire first and nice. then work off of that. Yeah, but how do you even – I guess what I was asking is, like, how do you even get to the point from uh. fucking around <laughs> with, like, right? you know, tinkering in the sure. garage to, like, learning how to to bend the tubes and, and uh, not even – I not fuck even, up a ton of shit. Yeah. Like, I have – like, I've ruined more stuff than I've made cool. For I real. mean, it's definitely gotten better in the last 10 years, but, like, learning, yeah, it's a learning curve. Um, that XS650 I did, I made the hard tail on it, and that was the first one I've ever made. Yeah. It was, it's pretty rough. Like, I don't ride it around very often because I don't want to show up somewhere at a bike night and be like, what is this piece of shit yeah. he's riding? He made that. Well, I made that when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, so... I keep it as it was because it kind of it, it's kind of shows you your progression from skill yeah. levels, but no, you you ruin a lot of stuff. M- materials cheap, you know, yeah. Just go to the local. We got a big steel s- store here and buy what you want. And yeah, that makes sense. Ruin it, and then you you learn from ruining it basically. Yeah, <clears throat> fuck. I mean, like the stainless one, I try not to ruin too many. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the pan head's all stainless, so. Man, that. I don't. I, I'm just trying to like put myself in this in this mindset of like of, of basically you, from my understanding of of trying to, I guess having the background and being around yeah, machinists that a makes lot, a big difference. It, it uh, helps fill in the it's gaps. A big, you know, there's a lot of math. You you get pretty good at math and yeah. angles and geometry and trig. So you have that background, and you kind of know how metal reacts and metal works, and when you weld it. Where's the reaction going to be? You know, mm. which way it's going to draw, which way it's not. So that's, that's a huge leg up being okay. in that industry for, for that long. So do you have like jobs that you started taking early on that were yeah, like, what was always, this? Like, what always. were you doing in that first job after you got the apprenticeship? Like, did you stay there long enough to like, yeah, um, I stayed at that shop. I was about 12 years there and I did, I did on-site machining as well. So I would go out to a job site and line bore, engines or re-sleeve cylinders or, or whatnot yeah uh large stationary engine machining so i would do on-site work too um went back in the shop for several more years did that mm-hmm. um quit went to another machine shop in and, and i actually learned a lot because it was more of like a job shop um farmer repair they'd bring junk in and i mean massive pile of shit and you would kind of have to reverse engineer it and weld it up, build it up, machine it, send it back out the door. Okay. And all real fast. Like, you didn't have – everything was very fast. Mm. Uh, there was no going slow and taking your time. It was you had to get it right and get it out the door. Yeah, I mean, farm equipment up here is probably – Huge. Huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they, you know, a lot of it's run straight the fuck into the ground, and yeah, you got to work with something to repair it and get it back out. Oh, that makes sense. So basically, just dealing with basically engine. So that's probably where it yeah. gives you kind of like some background in like on working the on engine engines. Side of it as well, because these aren't that much more complicated. No, than, no, Harley yeah. stuff simple. It really is. Yeah, pretty rude, <laughs> crude, <laughs> crude. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not a Japanese four cylinder or something. Yeah. You know, precision. that spins 17,500 RPM. Yeah. <laughs> if that turd hits six grand, you know. Yeah. It's going to be a rough night. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to the moon. <laughs> well, 
like I was saying, man, like, so you, you were doing that for a while, and then mm-hmm. did you start kind of tinkering with, like, frames, exhaust, things yeah, like that so on the back end? Or? at nighttime after work, you know, after I started building some stuff, people would come to me and ask if I'd be interested in taking on a project. So I'd get off work, and I would build, I'd build a ton of his, um, stainless exhaust setups. Yeah. Different handlebars. Um, the Harley shop here would, I would do a lot of their TIG welding and machining for them. Mm. So I had a real tie in with those guys. <clears throat> if they couldn't do it, then I could do it at home in my garage. Okay. Um, that kept me really, really busy for a long time. I mean, to the point where I was at that time even questioning, I going part time at my regular job and doing bike stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was, I was wanting to take the jump before, but I'm kind of glad I waited because it takes more than you think to jump in head first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I was telling, I lived in the shop for a year, Yeah. which is, you know, pros and cons, like we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you were telling me about how like you, uh, you know, you were doing that for a while and then, you know, what, how recent was it? Your move down to Austin and what, um, let's see, what was it about a year and a half ago? Something oh, that, like that. that quick. Yeah. 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 Yep. Short stint. So were you working on bikes here before you left? Yeah. Yeah. Like quite a bit? Nice. Always. Yeah. So I, uh, before I went through my divorce, I actually, or sorry, right after the divorce, I sold all my equipment, my machines, my lathes, welders, everything. Damn. Because I thought my move was going to be my move. Yeah. And I just took all my bikes and I put it in a buddy's garage. Mm. So I actually, all this is starting over from scratch again. Oh, like shit. Everything. So as you found them. Yeah. Found no kidding. <laughs> I've been in a couple of shops and these are actually cleaner machines. Uh, I like everything clean and organized. I yeah. don't I don't like messes. <laughs> you can't do precision work if your shop's a shithole. Yeah, true. Man, well, on that note, man, this place is like really dope. Like as soon as I walked in, I see the you. pictures online yeah. and it's like a really chill like walk in, so you're kinda of greeted with like a kind of a a vibe of like we make shit here right, right. you know what oh, I'm saying yeah, yeah definitely huh? like if you walk in the other side yeah. you feel like we fix shit <laughs> yeah exactly but this if you is walk- we make shit <laughs> and then we fix shit <laughs> and uh I mean that I don't know it's like I, I guess if, if if I was surrounded by like all these tools yeah I would definitely want to you know make fuck stuff. with it it makes shit sure. right absolutely you always have ideas going through your head yeah absolutely well how do you you know like I said, growing on these bikes and like, how do you, do you, do you feel like you've got to a point now where you have a, a style that kind of, are you kind of still t- like, cause you have a three or four yeah. different styles of bikes right, in right. here. Well, I you don't I mean? like building the same bike again. Yeah. I, I won't ever do that. My beer burps. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They can my deal with it. personal style is choppers. Okay. That's my thing. Just um, the whole umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, old school stuff. I'm yeah. Not the two hundred and fifty wide. Not the back. That's area. not my. Yeah. That's not my shit. Yeah. I mean, old school skinny bikes, small motors, r- narrow. Um, like I told you, when I first bought that Dyna, I ride. Everyone's like, "What in the actual fuck are you riding?" Because they never seen me on a bike that has suspension. Yeah. Or a bike, you know, like that. Like they're like, "What is this?" Because choppers are my thing. Yeah. I mean, I ride it everywhere. Nice. <laughs> What about like out here, just in general? Like you know, when you started riding bikes, like what, what's kind of the the go to? What's the vibe out here? I mean, I, I know that you got the the bars, sure, sure. But I mean, like a lot of soft tails. A lot of soft um, tails. Soft tails is the main thing. Um, I would say you know, soft tails and street glides outnumber everything. Yeah, like for big sure. time. Quite a few dynas, but not um, performance style. Yeah. Um, low slung wide glides. You know, more wide glides than anything. Yeah. That's super, super, super common. Um, older Japanese four cylinders. There's still a ton of those around Bro. here. Yeah, I mean they're everywhere. <clears throat> That's cool. That's kind of the vibe. And then of course, like your your big tire chopper bikes, <laughs> whatever you want to call those. Do you think like this area, <laughs> Lint has ever you know, from what just your knowledge uh, or whatever of it, your per- perception of it. Has it ever had, like, a big, like, old-school chopper, like, community connected to it? Or is it kind of more always there been... There is some people around here that have really awesome old-school collections. For real? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but <clears throat> I don't I don't think the interest isn't there for the newer riders. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there's no comfort in that type of bike. 
and you got to work on your own shit because it's too expensive to take it to a shop to have yeah. that. So if you don't know how to work on your own shit and you know, it's too rough of a ride, they just, yeah. they're not into it. There's no, there's no Bluetooth on a fucking old shovel head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Fuck. <laughs> Really? <laughs> it's, yeah, I know. It's weird. I'm working on one right now. Yeah. You get like an M unit or something like that put in there. Uh, well, I mean. There's a reason. They're not supposed to have one. <laughs> there is, there, there's truth to that 100%. You know, I, I, well, I was asking like more like the just the area or just yeah. like Kansas in general. But, you know, I got to say Kansas gets shit on a lot when it comes to motorcycles sure, just because. Sure. It, right. It's it's kind of like the low-hanging fruit of like it's right. flat and boring. <laughs> yeah, it is. But. I've had some of my best riding experience. Yeah. Not best. I'm, I'm going to go that far. Right. <laughs> I've had some great, don't lie to me. great riding yeah. experiences here. I, I don't know. I've I've ridden through here so many times back and forth to Sturgis. And uh, maybe not 70 and yeah. 35 or 135. Like maybe not the right. main highways. But oh, it's I've, gorgeous. I've cut off and it's I've gone beautiful. through these towns. And I've found myself tucked in between you know, corn stalks to, right. that I just, right. I found it like, this is fucking rad. No, the, you know well, what I'm the, saying? Riding two lanes around here is awesome. It's yeah. Like, I hate so, riding interstate. Yeah. You, know, you get a two lane around here and like, you know, when the sun's going down, it's absolutely gorgeous. That's what I was going to say, because like, you know, you, because you have big sky out here, you don't have a lot of tall trees. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get fucking amazing yep. sunsets. So no, it's, it's beautiful to ride and at. sunrises actually. So yep, exactly. So no, it, it, it's, it's, it's a nice place to live and ride. So, I can't well, complain. You know, what would you say is like kind of like the, is it kind of, you know, like you've been in Milwaukee, obviously. Mm-hmm. When you're in Milwaukee, you feel like this is a, this is a place where every kid has a bottle and a lathe. <laughs> like it just feels like the kind of place where right, like right. blue exactly. collar working class it, it shit. It is, exactly. People work for what they have. And then, so. I mean, around this, it's, you know. Yeah. This neighborhood's a little rougher. <laughs> <laughs> they steal for what they have, but, they you know, they're still working. <laughs> But I was just wondering, like, what do you think, like, the demographic is here? Is it more the farmland type? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, that kind of, doubt. yeah. Mm-hmm. My, man, I dig it. I, I feel like it's it's got a vibe out here. Yeah. It's, uh, like I said, I've ridden, you know, I've done Dodge City a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I actually like that town. I like that history. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had It smells to, like shit. <laughs> it, it does, actually. <laughs> Pretty gnarly. I had to, you know, when you start riding the, the, the planes a lot, then you kind of got to find ways to make it interesting. Yeah. Uh, man, I I got like enthralled into all the Indian like oh, Comanche cool. yeah. stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? And then like I just got I, I went down a rabbit hole in that one year, and then all of a sudden I'm riding through them like, oh shit, that's <laughs> medicine. <laughs> yeah, that's a medicine lodge or something that's like cool. that. And you're like, fuck, this is like things took place here. So just like when you're riding through Sturgis and Custer Park, mm-hmm. and you you hear all these stories, it's like a lot of that shit actually also right. took place something. here, sure. you know. Like Custer was one of the ones that had to go chase the Comanches <laughs> down for a while, you know what I mean? So, but it just kind of creates a little bit of interest because, you know, you get like the Mississippi, and then you got some 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 hills and small mountains in the Missouri right, and right. Arkansas, and I haven't been. To, I'll, I'll be in Iowa later on. I'll see there what the go. fuck it's like. It so. looks like Kansas is taller corn. Taller corn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's always been like this a lot of rad shit that's come out of sure. these areas you know what i'm saying so oh and there's some skilled dudes here and, and lady builders and guys and mm-hmm. i mean but there's not as much recognition i think because of the locations as there is west coast yeah. or new york or, or yeah, texas same. shit like that yeah. so but there is some very skilled people here nice yeah i, I was uh i i feel like this place you know it lends itself to a style of motorcycle sure i mean it was Definitely the style of chopper that was kind of known for this Absolutely. this this area, at least part yeah. of this area, you know what I'm saying? So and it's all dictated on the type of riding people do. Just like right. where you're talking about a skinny, right. narrow bike in California yeah. to lane split and right, exactly. corner. So yeah, it makes sense. So I when did all these baggers take over? <laughs> uh long <laughs> long rides. Like Electroglides back in the eighties. They, they needed something to get comfortably to Colorado. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Man, I don't, I think that a lot of the bagger shit just got big because the 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 boomers just got older and they started riding that. You well, know? I think they had the money to buy them too. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, That's they didn't have the of, money in the seventies yeah. yeah, when they but, when yeah, it was choppers. Now they're retired. And, yeah. you know, they can buy them. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like it 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 kept motorcycling the industry alive since. But it's like 
but it it basically went a different direction from. Yeah, and I mean, what, it, it kind of. I mean, it, it kind of has to in a sense. It's like it made it made it. I guess it made it harder, or I don't know. I'm, let me see how to put this. Like <laughs> the the crazy trends that kind of come and go. Mm-hmm. Like the the big wheel thing was probably the wildest thing that right, got right. crazy. Ugh. But there's a there was a part of choppers or yeah. billet era choppers, right? right. That got to that extreme, and then I think that the real riders correct themselves. Real, yeah, so. real motorcyclists, real so. builders, sure. they correct themselves. I don't think they really even jump on a fad. I think they kind of just stay true to what they do. Yeah, and I think the fads come and go, and either that's the style they're into or that's not. Oh <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I mean, also you got to look at it like this too. Like every how do you, how do you say it like. Every style of bike or every genre of bike, mm-hmm. if you will, is going to inspire some new people to get into sure. it and build. Sure. And you got to hope that it connects with them on a deep enough level right. that they will start to look in the past, in right. the future, and, and find put their own together and run with it. Yeah, it's like just because sure. you came in on the big wheel bagger area, hopefully right. you'll find a love for motorcycles and want to know about shovel heads and right. pan heads and, right. sure. and build that those kind sense. of bikes. And not just like, oh, it's big wheel baggers or fuck off. <laughs> right, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, that's where you get the bad. <laughs> right. You know, and they're not going to, they're never going to understand the true love of motorcycles. Never. Not at all. Because I could tell you from experience, like, even though I haven't ridden a chopper across country and yeah. that's, that's on the fucking bucket list, um, going from a bagger and then riding an FXR across the country sure, sure. was like two totally different things. Two, yeah. I mean, right. and you're just, you're in tune with the bike more because you're, you know, it's a little, you have to be, you have to be yeah. right. You, you need to it hear takes it more. more of the rider. Yeah. And so with that being said, it's like, I've always tried to, I've always had a hard time trying to explain how that, what I'm talking about, because you tell certain people like, Oh, I don't want to have to go across country and worry about my bike. But it's like, it's not, it's not so much worry. It's just, no. you're paying attention. Sure. Absolutely. Like you when know? you ride a chopper, you ride a hardtail bike or something stretched out you, you're like scanning the fuck out of the road because yeah. you don't want to hit that. Yeah. But boy, when you do, you know. <laughs> It'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're always watching the road. You're always scanning. You're like 30 feet ahead of you just kind of viewing shit out. Yeah. Especially if you ride, you know, suicide and no front brake and yeah. foot I, clutch hand shift. You're really I'm... kind of all over the place. I have ridden one of those two yeah. before, and that <laughs> scared the shit out of me, dude. There's a lot going on. You got to think about so many things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Like finding neutral because both your feet are on levers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do like a foot clutch and no front brake, no like front you're just brake. asking for no front like, brake. Yeah. That is, that's how you are. That's my pan. Yeah. Oh, fuck dude. Yeah. Yeah. Good like thing it's you, flat here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ain't no joke. Yeah. Take that shit to San Francisco real quick. <laughs> <how> it goes. <laughs> I would probably have some type of break. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I was like thinking about that once I, my buddy, he had a, he has a shovel head. Uh, it was actually, he kind of chopped it a little bit in the front, but he left the suspension on the rear and I wrote it like suicide shift. And I kind of got, got it. Right. And I was like, while I'm riding, I'm like, man, like I started thinking of all the scenarios where this <laughs> where would not be go good. Wrong. Yeah, and I was like, I don't <laughs> it's know. It's pretty much all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if yeah. I could. I don't know if I could do it without a front brake. It's You'd weird. Ha- I, I think New York they do it a lot like that too, but yeah. they're also it's flatter there. You're not sure, gonna get stuck sure. in this weird like brake. Right, 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 right. Where you're trying you know to engage, I mean? going up a hill just to yeah. hold your spot, or, or something. trying to find neutral, and that, right. I don't know. Uh, I'm all just thinking out of my head right here on that, but <laughs> no, it makes sense. <laughs> so when you started trying to build it or oh. building this bike, like, did you have a, a goal in mind as far as like the way you want it to look like um, had you wanted to do a, a stainless it steel change directions a little bit? Uh, I wasn't going to run a panhead, but I was going to do the stainless steel frame. So originally I I machined the neck first because I knew exactly what I wanted to run. Mm-hmm. And then I did the wheel. I made the wheels and set them where I wanted. Yeah. I was going to run a totally different powertrain. And then I stumbled upon that. And I was like, okay, now I know where I'm headed. Yeah. And then just proceeded with that. <clears throat> the The reason I did the front cylinder really was because the original panhead front cylinder had, had a whole bunch of broken fins on it. Okay. I was like, well, f- I think I can make one. 
Yeah. Nice. So that's that's the reason I made one. It's a big ass block of aluminum, huh? It's a big old chunk of aluminum. Another reason why you probably made one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big old chunk a of thousand aluminum. Thousand dollar piece of aluminum, probably. <laughs> Depending on what, what when you buy it. Big old chunk. So. Well, you know, like that style, like so. The other you had said something earlier that kind of like brought up another question to me, but obviously machining and then tubes fitting those together mm-hmm. like creating frames but sure. you said sheet metal as well like yeah that's a yeah. whole nother fucking that's a whole nother i mean it's still metal working you know yeah. what i mean what you do causes something here causes something here so knowing how metal reacts it kind of kind of all works together okay. yeah mach- precision machining is different but bending tube sheet mm. metal work you know it kind of all ties together a little bit I just always, I, I think I overthink things, and I, I look at a tank, and I think about matching. Sure. Like, it's easy to build one thing, but... It's very easy to make half of a tank. Yeah. It's very hard to make the other half of the tank. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. It's very hard. Yeah. I feel like a fender, yeah. you know, could lend itself a little bit You can easier. make your halves, and that's not too shabby, and then... You can make your cap, and then you can fudge a little bit with your welds and your filing to get your radiuses contoured the same, yeah. too. Well, I've seen, like, Depending a lot of guys make will make, like, a, a wood frame yeah, situation. Yeah, you make a buck, always. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, Especially that makes if sense. you plan on remaking something. Nice. But you make the buck so that way you can do the other side, mirror it 180. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. With some accuracy, hopefully. It, I guess it's probably a little bit easier. If I just think about those curves, because as a painter, like I deal with curves all the time, right, and even though right. way easier with right. paint than I would imagine, like having complex reverse curves <laughs> sure, sure. and shit like that. Yeah. You know? Oh no. I mean, I I have limits. Like I can't just go out there and make a whole car out of a piece yeah, of metal. Yeah. Like I know my limits. I enjoy pushing them. I don't mind fucking up, yeah. ruining a piece of sheet metal and starting over. Mm. Um, that's the only way you're going to get better I is by out, yeah. hitting your limit. Yeah, I think that I think myself, I probably put too much emphasis don't on... Don't put so much thought in it. Just yeah. do it. Like, I'm like, oh, it, this has to work. Like, I right. can't... Right. You know, I used to hear Jesse James talking about that. Like, if it sucks, just throw it away. Just do it again. Just do it again. But I don't know, man. Like, yeah. I, I was always like, ah. Oh. Yeah. No, and that's, that's the difference right. between precision and... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not as much precision as it is, like, finesse. Yeah. You know what I mean? On a lathe or a mill, I, I go off numbers. Like, yeah. it's just a constant number going through your head and, and what you're working with. Well, that's not the same thing when you are you hit something and it changes its thickness and swedges it out. You yeah, know? yeah. Big difference. Yeah, I... I like, when I was making my cylinder, I, I, I walked away from my shop... And, like, didn't even come out and touch it. Because I was like, why did I do this? This is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever done. I can't do this. And, like, literally didn't even go in my garage for, like, two weeks. Yeah. And then finally I was like, all right, I think I can probably figure Let's it give out. give some time to yeah, figure out the yeah, kinks. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you just got to do the walk away. Leave your projects alone. Clear your head. Another thing that was, like, different that I, and, of course, I'm speaking from a place of ignorance on, like, kind of, like, a lot of the chopper style uh, pan heads and stuff. Right. Your your primary my open chain yeah yeah I'm like, running a single row open chain so exactly I haven't seen that much or if if at all so what's uh, the, it's a little violent <laughs> is that what it is <laughs> I wouldn't want to get next to it okay you know real close well traditionally I mean if you open if you even open your dining up you've got a yeah. primary chain yeah basically the same thing just a dry clutch setup mm. and instead of the double row I went and machined off a row of teeth on each sprocket. Okay. And I machine off the outer row so I can keep the chain more inset away from your jeans and yeah. your boots and shit. And That's it still works fine. It's well, just that thing of only a... makes 45 horsepower. You know? Yeah, it's not that, that wild. Yeah. You don't really want to dump the clutch on it, I don't think. I don't know. Some <laughs> mouse is going to break. <laughs> it works just fine. <laughs> but it's 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 a looker, though. It cleans yeah, it up cleans in that it area. Up. And makes it look a lot more exactly. just antique, yeah, almost. big time. Big you time. know what I mean? Makes it seem like it's older than it actually is, mm-hmm. even though pan heads are pretty, pretty old. old. Right. Uh, but, you know. Yeah, it, it, and you should see it running. It's just cool. I mean, it is visually. It, is it slapping well, around? Well, you know, the torque side of the chain is tight, you know, because yeah. it's driving it around, pulling it around. And, of course, the bottom has a little bit of slack. But it's just, I mean, you look at it and it's like, whoa, fuck, <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> you see open belts. You see the BDL yeah. shit and all the big stuff. But a chain adds a little bit different yeah. something to it. I don't Attached know. Attached to it, yeah. Yeah. 
because nothing like hearing an open primary and you know push the clutch in with your foot or, foot or pull it in with your fingers and yeah. you hear the plates rattling. Yeah, it's clanking. You can around. hear an open primary coming on the block when they pull the clutch in. Yeah, uh, it's crazy because I'm more used to the Ducati sound. Oh, gotcha. gotcha of that yeah, because yeah. I come from the sport bike world, so it's like <laughs> it's totally different. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, that I noticed that, and then. Um, you know, you you said you made the front end on that as yeah, well. Yeah, like that's huh? wild. Made the Springer, yep, dude. Like, yeah, and it's all three hundred four stainless as well. <clears throat> yeah, that's the only thing me, I that's... bought. I mean, I bought the springs. Yeah, yeah, you know, the chrome springs, but everything oh, else. You yeah, real builder? I really, you know, I don't consider myself a builder. I <laughs> yeah. went out and bought springs. <laughs> uh, the classic fucking argument. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Wanna be? <laughs> yeah, didn't fucking pour the rubber in those mm. tires, huh? Uh, I got a rubber tree out back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I never knew where rubber came, or I, I never, I I got wrapped up into a YouTube rabbit hole, and right. I, I think one of the Ford heirs yeah, started a whole city in South America to to, to harvest rubber. Yeah, and it's still there, and their people are still there. I don't think they're Isn't making. That why ru- Firestones and Fords got together? Their families married or whatever. It's, it probably Not is. all their family. Yeah, I, like, I didn't know that. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's why Fords come with Firestones. I think. Don't sense. quote me on this. I'm not a you know. Well, yeah, I, I never got historian. that far deep into it, but I, I did read that. And I was like, I thought rubber was based out of oil and petroleum and shit. Yeah, kind well, of. I think they put that in there. Okay, yeah. but there's still some kind of plant based yeah. thing that has to go in with it. Isn't it white? Also, rubber. I think rubber so. is Naturally white, and they dyed them to make dark tires. Good thing. Uh, yeah, it looks saying, a lot better. I, I like white walls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just thought that was a random thing. Like, fuck. <laughs> That's wild. But well, thanks for the history lesson. Yeah, it's, it's a very vague one. You should probably go right? Google it or something. I yeah. will. I'm gonna I'm gonna check all this when I'm done with it. Fact check me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. I I, I don't know. I, I dig the bike though. It's Thank like, you. Thank you. It, it really yeah. does look good. And like I said, it's one of those things that when I was going, you know, like I said, I've had chopper fever off and on. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like herpes. It kind of <laughs> it pops, pops up back every once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and uh, my 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 chopper fix is herpes yeah. based. So, um, well, you can also get herpes from riding choppers. I think <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or hemorrhoids. That's what I meant. Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Yeah. Hemorrhoids, yeah. <laughs> no matter what your crotch is going to hurt, I promise. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I I know for a while uh, I think I was I think around. I can't remember when, but I started following you on that, and uh, I would see it. Everyone, you know how Instagram is now. Huh? Like you follow people, but they don't like unless like I won't see right, everything you right. post. Yeah, right? I hate that. Right, and um, and then like I started putting this trip together, and I always knew you were out of Salina. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep, you said it right. And uh, and I would even like even last couple of times I came through Sturgis, I was like, I wonder where that guy's shop yeah, is at. Yeah. Blah blah blah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I just I wanted to come up here and check it out, man, and just see, and then I just kind of get a lay of the land of like what it's like to do right. what you do in this part of the country. You know what I mean? Because even though it's you know in hundred percent ways, it's that what you're doing is unique to you. Sure, it's also sure. like the similarities are still like it's still it, there. The, the, the same, same machines, struggles are yeah. there. You know, dealing with shit and problems. Everybody, everybody's bike shop has it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just. Different location, a little bit different clientele. When do you think it's you really not a big money area? Yeah. You know? When do you think you really started getting like some of the op- like I guess we air quotes opportunities to like like Lichter yeah. show and and um, you know I don't know. Let me think. Probably. I mean, I built the turbo bike and it got a little bit of exposure. Got in a couple of magazines, mm-hmm. um, and I think after that, let's see, where did I take that? The hand built. I mean, show. I took the turbo bike to the hand built show. I got an invitation to that, and I think after that, um, I think I got a little bit more exposure. And but then again, wanted to build something a totally different direction. Yeah, um, and that's what I did. That's cool. But that yeah. helps. I mean, social media people see your shit. You know, even if you don't think so, people see your shit, yeah. or they get shared, or you get shared. You know, and that's how it works. Yeah, I never. I've only been to one hand built show. It's very cool. It's a very cool atmosphere. And I, I went there very naively, though. I yeah. went there with like this. You know, like I said, I went there with Harley goggles. Sure. sure. Yeah, like, you can't do that. Yeah, it's totally everything. You know, in every style. And and with with me doing that, like I, I fucked myself not. Right. 
uh, getting to see these other bikes and see the builders that are right. behind them and, sure. and you know and and also the, the other good thing about that show is like how many people are not like purists right, right. like they they like building things sure. building motorcycles exactly. whatever the canvas is which yep. I can I can respect that because it's uh we have a little bit too much tribalism sure. in Harley I got oh, yeah, a yeah. fucking Harley There's tattoo so on my neck There's so much more you know? talent out there in the bike world than that are just building Harleys. Yeah. I mean, there are some amazing people out there building shit that, you know, they started with an old mm-hmm. Honda for 500 bucks in their garage. Like, yeah. there's so much talent out there. It, it, it's not just to the Harley motorcycle. Yeah. I, like I said, I feel like when a lot of us, we put on these goggles and that's what we see and Absolutely. that's what all we pay attention sure, to. Sure, sure. And, you know, you just kind of get fixated on, like, that world. and It's easy to do. Yeah. Especially if that's your interest. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. You know, that's yeah. what you like. You know. Yeah, that, I mean that's case in point. Like I became friends with the the guy that runs like the Cafe Racers of Instagram. Okay. Thing. Yeah, you're and, right on. Yeah, he's got a big following. Yeah, cool I've shit on. Been his page. on the podcast a couple of times, and we just we don't really talk about motorcycles much yeah. when we're around each other, but we just talk <laughs> about like he rides right. a lot, right? And, right. and uh, you know, he, he he's so connected in that the hand built the Haas Museum, sure, like sure. all these different more. I don't know the way if it's you would say eclectic style builds, right, but right. And then like diving into like so many of these builders around that kind of uh, style, you know. Right. So I finally started following some of these pages <laughs> <laughs> to try to, you know, just to see the kind right. of stuff and and whatnot. And I don't know, like <laughs> I, I always say like this, like for me, it's it's just easier to, like I'm I'm a I'm a like a tunnel vision hone yeah. in kind of guy, right. And I get distracted, like ADD, <laughs> like, oh, look at that, right. that's cool. And then I, yeah. I, I just can't process all the different styles. And, and then all the people, too, like when I started doing this podcast, like, who do I want to talk to? I don't want to, if I go talk to someone that's all just right. CB500s yeah, and 750s, yeah, yeah. No, like, you can't, man. you know. I'm a bike enthusiast. I yeah. like I like things of every different level of motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, I'll ride a fucking Vespa if it's pimped out and yeah. rips. I don't care. I just like two wheels and yeah and and different things no 100 percent. i i i've actually ridden a vespa and they're <laughs> fucking rad dude i think there's he, like videos of youtube's like with like jicks or swap vespas and some shit <laughs> like wheeling and all i was like impressive uh I'd get that guy that. on the show <laughs> you ever seen it back in the day when they put the hayabusa motors in like the smart cars yeah, and stuff that's impressive yeah golf carts <laughs> <laughs> couldn't think of a dog i never saw the golf car one. Wild. yeah golf carts gnarly that's wild <laughs> ah man so what, what do you turbo build, build on a smart car for a guy yeah oh shit, for real? shit up yeah damn it's still a smart car what do you so when you were building that the the turbo sportster like huh? what was the uh i mean that that definitely has a cafe yeah. vibe but sure, it's, sure. i can see how you turn it into a model shock You're right yep um the the whole turbo setup is pretty pretty rad like like what was the idea behind that uh, build? when i first did it i just always and it was way, way back before, like, the turbo scene really kind of hit Harley stuff. <clears throat> um, I was like, man, I just wanted, just wanted to do it, see if I could. Yeah. So I just had a um, 2005, 2005 um, 1200 Sportster R, you know, the Roadster, what a dual front yeah. brakes bullshit. And I slammed it down on the back, kind of drag bike with rear set style. And I was, and then built the turbo header set up and the, the turbo's off of a Jetta and I didn't do any math. I didn't do any numbers on shit. I was just like, I just want to build this and make this thing work. Let's see what it can do. Mm-hmm. And, and it fucking worked. <laughs> and so like I had no experience with turbo stuff at all. <clears throat> and I actually had a blow off valve on the cold side intake going in. <laughs> Don't do that because it's a well, draw through carb, so it's already atomized fuel. Okay, <clears throat> that fucking thing she would shoot fireballs when you would let off the throttle and it opened it up on vacuum. Okay. It was already atomized fuel, so any hiccup it would it would light that thing up. Yeah, I was wondering. Why I had they a don't learning have, curve on that. I, was, I did it, not have any business doing it. I didn't ever think so. You have it's carbureted. Is it's that, carbureted draw through? Correct. Okay, so if it was fuel injected, you probably would correct. Be okay. You'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. As, depending on what side of it was on, because mm. the fuel injectors are further down line, you'd be fine here. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I came so, from the turbo car I made a world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it works really, really good, and I yeah. beat the shit out of it for years. And then finally, I was like, I want to change it. That's when I stretched the swing arm. Mono shock is off of a ninja. Okay, the rear wheels off of a ninja, and did you know the paint different? You know, different paint and setup yeah. different. I tie on the on kind of like the seat cowl. Uh-huh. You kind of bought you kind of sheet metal, but kind of like plate it's tapered met- too. Yeah. So it's tapered both ways. So you know you've got but it, it a was, radius this way that tapers back, but then at the same time the sides of it are also tapered, tapered down. Tapered in, yeah. So. Yeah. It also gives you a place to hide a couple things in there, I think. Well, maybe you haven't seen my pegs that I make. Okay. My stash pegs. You can oh, unscrew shit. them. Put your insurance cards in them. Insurance cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it works really good for them. <laughs> <laughs> my friends will put something else in there. Hey, I don't care what they put in there as long as they put money in my uh, PayPal account. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, you were talking about that. So yeah. what's what's kind of the con? Like, I know that you want to. You got to put these things to use. Yeah, to- yeah. No, I've got some ideas. Um, I've got some prototype parts. I've kind of sketched up and designed. But the main maintenance stuff in the shop on bikes just keeps me busy. Yeah. Um, when I have a little bit of downtime, I'll get to machining some prototypes and put them online and sell. Yeah. But for now, I just got to keep cranking wrenches and. Changing tire. And yeah, it's a it's a slippery slope because it is. It is. At you some know, point, you have to stop doing that and bring someone in. Well, I mean, that. just that in general. But you know, like you know, I, I'm pretty good friends with Boosted Brad, and yeah. watching him go from, I mean, essentially, you and Brad are very similar. I yeah. think you have more of a machining and fabricating background, um, but paint, sure, you know, the whole sure. nine yards. But when he started. Uh, you know, manufacturing parts and things like that and designing them. And I think that someone does them out, like they outsource. Outsource, sure. But he, you know, he has all this stuff. He can, you know, whatnot. But it quickly became so much because of the internet, right? Oh, of course. And next thing you know, it's like, fuck, like. (laughs) How do I keep up? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you know, it's just, I mean, the internet's a good thing and a bad thing. It's it's good because, you know, you can get your shit out there and actually uh, continue to, reach new customers right. and then and you know those those pegs might turn into a bike build one day because they like of course, of course. the quality <clears throat> and it puts attention on your brand and how you present yourself sure, and things sure. like that so I kind of want to I I limit myself I guess I do this I I want to be my own boss and do my own thing cuz I don't want to be stressed the fuck out yeah so I don't want to take on so many ventures that it ruins wanting to go to work every day and enjoying yeah. what I'm doing um, so, you know, even when I, a customer calls, I'm a one man band. I give them a realistic timeline. I'm just one person. Here's how long it'll probably take, you know? Yeah. And that's, it's, it's enjoyable for me that way. And you, you let them know out front how long it's going to take to do. Yeah. You manage the expectations. Yeah. I don't have 10 people working for me, but I want to keep it enjoyable. If I want to not do anything tomorrow, you yeah. know, I have that option. So yeah, it's definitely important <laughs> to have. Yeah, but you're always, you know. I'm I, never I, not working, working, but, you know. Yeah. I feel like what what ends up happening is self-employed, you're you're robbing Peter to pay Paul with time, not money. Sure. Oh, absolutely. But, you know well, I mean? I mean, a regular job, all you're doing is selling time and a skill for a paycheck. Yeah, So, exactly. same thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. For I, someone you hate to work for every day. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking assholes out here. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean you know, moving forward into like, you know, the motorcycle mm-hmm. industry and, and like what you can provide. I mean, like I said, you're kind of, you're kind of out here in Salina. Right. I got to yeah. keep, Middle I got to keep saying that. Bumfuck Egypt. But what, th- is there any other bike shops around here that you compete with at all? As far as um, service and like builds and shit? Yeah. About 30 miles away, there's a, a shop that, you know, they do service work and repair and stuff. Um, and then of course there's a Kawasaki dealership. Um, but what I do, I think what I do is very different, um, because of the machining and the fabrication. Um, yeah, of course we still do all the repairs and tires and all that stuff, but, uh, my expertise is different than I think anybody else around. And I don't think anyone even close to Salina does that kind of work. Yeah. You know, with cylinder boring, you name it. It doesn't matter what it is. We can do it. I mean, do you get like hit from other shops through the cylinder board? Yeah, I do a lot of work for other shops. Okay, yeah. um, people will give me a call, or you know, I've got a lot of the specialty shit to work on stuff yeah, too. And I like, you know, that's I don't mind helping people out. That's not a big deal. Yeah, 
I'm not in competition with them. And yeah. I, they're, I don't think they are with me. So yeah, it, makes sense, it doesn't yeah. bother me at all to help anyone out. Yeah, for sure. What about, uh, like, you know, you're talking about doing the parts and stuff. Like, huh? when do you think you'll be able to roll some of those out there in the market? Well, I've been thinking about it for, <laughs> I've been talking that I need to get it done. There's a big ass stick of aluminum bar stock to get started <laughs> on my shit. It's been there for six months. Yeah. But, I have uh, drawn up some new prints and some new designs. I just haven't had time to. Yeah, it's been a it's been a busy year. That's good. Yeah, it's good. So. Well, I mean, y'all, you talk, you were talking about how like you know you've only been back here a year. You've right. been getting right. back in the uh, the motions of sure, running the shop sure. and reestablishing yourself back here in Salina. Mm-hmm. Selena. Selena. <laughs> Selena just found, sound, it, it feels just rolls better. off the tongue better. Selena. Selena just sounds a fucking Plus, beard. I'm from Texas, so we get a little Selena vibe <laughs> down there. Um, you spell it with an E, though. Yeah. <laughs> cra- craziest story. I went to a lowrider show in, uh, in, Texas? Cor- in Corpus Christi. <laughs> a long time ago, like 2010, like I used to do a lot of lowrider paint yeah. jobs. Yeah. It was just oh, part of cool. being airbrush artist yeah. and stuff. And uh, I used to... Like at car shows, I would airbrush live. Yeah. Like I do, like a the t-shirts. You do no, the I wouldn't do t-shirts. t-shirts. I, I never was that airbrush artist. I okay. wish I was. They're they're yeah. the best. Um, I used to like put a canvas. I prep a canvas out, yeah. and I would go to a show. And these these low rider con- shows would also have concerts. Okay. Usually hip hop influence, so like some kind of you know yeah. Ice Cube or <laughs> yeah, something like that right. there. So I would like go to these things, and I would always like airbrush a live big That's picture cool. of like you know Lil Wayne yeah, or yeah, fucking yeah. Ice Cube right or whatever because the people walking by be like oh shit that's fucking Ice Cube right, or that's right, Rihanna right. or something like that that's so rad. it would draw attention to it and I remember we were there in Corpus Christi the only time I've ever been there <laughs> and the guy the people I was with like hey we're going to strip club tonight yeah. so I'm like alright yeah. let's go and the <laughs> Selena Memorial Museum was next door to the strip club <laughs> And I just felt like that didn't it just, have... It just felt wrong? It felt wrong. Like, it felt disrespectful. Depends and I, what music they play at the strip club. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, Dang. I don't know, it was a wild one. And then, you huh. know, still huge. Like, she's uh, huge in Texas. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. there's probably 20 fucking murals of her in Dallas alone. No shit? Yeah. Wow. That's so, rad. It's, I mean, it's cool. It's definitely badass. But, like, I just... I never... I never let that go out of my head just right. thinking about, like... I'm in line. Hey, it meant a lot. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. I'm in line to Random. get a lap dance. And I gotta, <laughs> it's like having a strip club Rest next to a peace. church. Yeah. <laughs> or in a church. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. You get to choose whether you want to sin or fucking <laughs> repent. Every I feel day. like sinning. <laughs> I drove by the strip club on the way in here. Oh, What's yeah, it yeah. called? The, the Shady Lady? The Shady yeah. Lady. That's a mm. fucking awesome name. Mm, yeah. Are the they pretty, the best part about it. It is? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what the talent must be like out here. Uh, I don't even know if I'd go as far as calling it talent. I mean, I have, I, I've frequented it before. <laughs> Believe it or not. You got your own, you got your own fucking booth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one else wants to send in it, I promise. <laughs> you know, in Dallas, some of the strip clubs we have, I haven't been yeah. to them in years, just so my wife's listening. Um they they sell advertisements for a lot of places. Like so, you'll be in the strip club, and this will really? be the fucking booth for this will be the AA affordable insurance booth. Really? Yeah, like it's it's like a hockey like, game, like that or NASCAR, <laughs> but for strip clubs and like they wear like thongs with like yeah, it's got their advertisements on it, and the guy's <laughs> insurance face on our crotch. <laughs> it's got a QR code on it. <laughs> Can you scare my code? <laughs> you just swipe your card. That's probably I, I, like I said. I haven't been to strip club in a long time. Yeah, whatever. I, I want. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if they like do that shit. Like they have like QR well, codes. We can just for uh, tips. load your shit up and head out. They open yeah. at four thirty. We can uh, continue this. Podcast. I want to see that 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 crew at four thirty. That's like C team. <laughs> I need a dinner crowd at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's free babysitters till seven for the dancers. Oh, shit. So, like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a daycare in the back and all that. <laughs> well, usually, like, uh, I know, like, uh, you know, I, I work. There's a shop in uh, Oklahoma called uh, Covington Customs a lot. Okay, yeah. I know so I, I go up there and paint a lot for them, and they, they live in a super small town, Woodward, Oklahoma. And it's like one it's like one main drag and then barely anything to eat there. Yeah. But 
great bars. Yeah. And there's a lot of oil field workers out there and ranch oh, hands yeah. and things yeah. like that. So you get a crazy dynamic of rowdiness. Rowdiness. Uh but I don't know, I fucking dig it, man. Huh. I like I like that I, I'm from a big city, so yeah, the smaller yeah. town stuff always uh is interesting to me. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to go with that, but I just... <laughs> well, 4.30, strip club. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Is there, a, is there a lot of those out here? Is it kind of No, like... that's the only one we have. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Wichita's got a lot. They do. Probably a little bit classier, I'm guessing. Yeah. Cars are pretty rough. <laughs> I, You know, the when I first started going to California, we were talking about you know her being in NorCal. I, that's the first thing. I was like, where's all the strip clubs? Because Dallas... Clubs? They have them. Dallas has some killer strip clubs. Like, like Stockton, which that's I've been to that one. (laughs) It's it's rough. You think that's rough? Yeah, there's a couple in Fairfield. I don't think there's any in Madrigal. As big as big as NorCal is, yeah, you would think that they would have everywhere. Just more badass ones. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a strip club. Yeah, you, you just go get a rub and tug the, right to the Fuck, end. Yeah. Why would I want you dance? Yeah, <laughs> my let's, shoulders hurt. <laughs> let's skip this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, because Dallas, we, we, you know, honestly, I, I've had done strip club stuff in a long time because we used to do a lot of bike shows and stuff yeah. there, and you just kind of get used to that world, and it just right, kind of like right. whatever. But we had a the only strip club I ever liked in Dallas was it's called the Clubhouse, and okay. it was a. Uh, it was Vinnie Paul's, who was in Pantera's club. So when wow. you would go there, like you got chicks dancing to like Rage Against the Machine yeah, yeah, and fucking right, like right. rock music, cool. which was a different vibe because all the other right. strip clubs are like rap. strictly hip hop and rap, and mm. and they're the ones where you That's get cool. shot at. And right, just, yeah, those, that makes it not very fun. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> it really kills the vibe. It literally. does, <laughs> you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in the like late '90s, early 2000s, with like the first couple times I went to a strip club, it yeah. seemed more like blended between like music. That makes sense. And then the music all switched to just one they side. They should of the- just have like Touch Tones Strip Club Edition. Yeah, they were so just like put headphones. If you go on. into a bar and you can just play Touch Tones app on your phone. You don't play music. They should have yeah. the strip club. Yeah, like highest bidder gets the song they want to play. What's well, like the music? They, they start are- dancing. The music I want to listen to, yeah, it just doesn't lend itself to strip clubs, yeah. right? Like I don't, I mean, I, I guess you could probably get away with some like Johnny Cash in there every yeah. once in a while, but yeah, I don't know if like Backstreet Pink Boys. Floyd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, there's there's some of those Backstreet Boys and NSYNC songs they come on and you, you can't stop, but you can't you got to move. You just know you all gotta, the gotta, words. You got to feel like, it. <laughs> it's all right, whatever. I don't know. I I've I've just uh I don't know. Like I I just haven't like uh I guess a long time I well I dated a stripper for a while too, yeah, so that changed yeah. my whole Your perspective perception. on everything. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And uh she didn't strip while we were dating, yeah. but you know, because I was too insecure to allow that to happen. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I took one off the market, boys. <laughs> That's what you think. Yeah, no, she just started escorting. <laughs> yeah. She's not a dirty dancer anymore. She just sucks. I can yeah. <laughs> yeah, I she can definitely. <laughs> no, that's. I think that's actually what happened. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd this money come from? Oh, baby, I'm rich. <laughs> like, oh shit! Buy me a Busa. <laughs> hey. That's how you got into sport bikes. Yeah, yeah. I had, a, I had a sugar mama. Mm-hmm. No, I did. I did. I went to a bike show at a strip club once, and then that'd hit, be fun. Hit it up with a, one yeah. of the chicks there, and then. Went on a date with us, like, look, I think you're rad, but I just don't know how I feel about, you know. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was 21 years old. Yeah, I'm fucking I insecure as shit. That's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It takes time to be secure, I guess. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, like, especially me, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I I just barely, my, my teeth are not even that good now, but yeah. still, like, I had fucking really bad teeth yeah. for my whole adult life, gotcha. you know? And so it's like, you're self-conscious about everything. It's like... I used to be skinny and fit, but yeah. you know, beer. Remember, yeah, I 20, love it. Twenty nine. I was stop. It's one hundred eighty pounds. You? I'm forty. Okay, right on. Yeah, so yeah. I was. I've got ten years of drinking and not, yeah. you know, working out like I should be. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I, I played sports all through high school, and then right, and right. then in my twenties and stuff, and then 
transferred over to drinking and riding motorcycles. <laughs> so that fucked me. <laughs> Basically, my family so just that. breastfed us with a bottle of Budweiser when we were babies. So it's just genetic. Ah, that's that's good. That's dope, though. <laughs> German. <laughs> <laughs> it creates some issues later down the road called alcoholism. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, on that note, it's like, it's hard to figure out where, like, when do you say you have a problem, right? Mm. Like, because oh, I've oh, got. Oh, I saw a t shirt the other day. What it says. <laughs> Hold on, it'll come to me. Um, if you haven't sucked dick for it, it's not an addiction. Fair enough. So I think that's where we just that's figured a fair it out. Fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, you know, I've, I've been around people that truly cannot if something controls your life yeah. to the point where you can't do your daily functions i would have to say you're probably fucked up i you got some change it i got some good friends that, that they can drink me on the table table yeah. and they do regularly but i still don't even feel like they're they have a drinking problem i just think sure. they're good at it yeah, no people can be very good at it yeah yeah and then like you see the guys <laughs> I, I excel at some <laughs> things in life and that's <laughs> look i'm kind of a fucking connoisseur of alcohol so <laughs> Don't Cheap alcohol. Yeah. He wouldn't even drink my Bud Light. <laughs> he had to get Dos Equis because he's the I world's did, I fucking drink. most interesting man, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I miss those commercials. <laughs> you, you know what we don't see anymore is Who's beer that? commercials. No, none. Uh-uh. You're you right. know, Bud. Right. Wise. Hmm. Er. Yeah, you don't have any of that stuff anymore. The most interesting or man. Or cigarette, like cigarette commercials. Yeah, we were talking about. So it's like hmm. they made some of the coolest shit. Disappear. Because all we have now is insurance commercials on TV. Right. The State Farm yeah, guy, yeah, Jake true. from State Farm. That's really all there is. Everything's pretty innocent nowadays. Yeah. It's PC. So. <laughs> we got strip clubs. We're all right. Yeah, on the outside of town. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous, too, over there. <laughs> this whole area, you got to be very careful. If this is dangerous, dude. I don't know, man. Like, do you got Have sh- you been to head, Stockton? Had shotgunned off right across the street. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That's getting close. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nasty. What are they fighting over? I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't know. <laughs> I don't Sounds know. like you do. I don't know. <laughs> but I saw the thing and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's. No, it's pretty. I mean, for the, uh, the size of town, it's, it's pretty rough sometimes. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Especially well, here. Yeah. Yeah. This area. Yeah. Yeah, I just wonder if like maybe because it's a smaller town, you're, like, you're just exposed or it's like closer to home kind of thing. Uh-huh. No, I think it's like the needles and homeless people all over. <laughs> uh, y'all got homeless people? Oh, fuck. They're all over the place. Dude, yeah. I didn't know they got up this north. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And it's really fucking cold here. Yeah, I'm like, I dude, feel bad for them. Th- go to California. <laughs> it's right? so warm. Like, like I said, it was like negative 10 last week. <laughs> what in the fuck are you doing in Salina homeless? Yeah, well, I wonder what they're doing. Like, how do they stay warm? Like, probably circle know. jerks? I don't know. Go watch these cameras. You'll find out what they're doing all night. <laughs> <laughs> all night long. Wow. <laughs> and y'all lived right here for a whole year. Literally. In, in the shop. Yeah. Oh, it was exciting. There was some wild shit happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, I... I uh, I used to live in downtown Dallas. Like, I, when I was a kid, like, I always wanted a loft. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. A, yeah. Loft like apartment a, thing. Just loft kind of, it's an efficiency is what the fuck it is, if okay. we're being honest. But yeah. it had, like, exposed bricks, super dope That's spot. Cool. Um, I always wanted that. And then I had it. I had two of them. One was, like, next to, on the street of all the bars. Okay. Yeah. And all night, you just hear shit happening. Just it's crazy how, like, between a wall and glass and distance, you can hear a conversation so perfectly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very true. Like, how the <laughs> fuck is, is words traveling through fucking walls, walls. right now? That and, is weird. You know, like, I would just sit there and lay in bed up, you know, in this loft, a hundred yards, if not from the main dragon yeah. street, and I feel like you I can, can listen everything. and hear, yeah. like conversations of people like standing in the no, in the parking it. lot you know what i mean yeah it's wild and i imagine here like you hear everything sh- feet shuffling down everything the, just down walking the... around they'll shake the door yeah. handles at night kick fuck the doors like... no fucking fuck. joke we're cold <laughs> oh fuck me this... too come pay my 400 hundred dollar a month heating bill fuck. yeah <laughs> yeah i got ac and heat in my shop too and i need to turn that motherfucker off dude Ooh. it's been kicking my ass lately. dude it's rough yeah Oh, yeah. Uh, I watched a TikTok video. I get lost. I go down, you okay. know. You can just keep watching videos. And 
this guy, uh, he bought one of the Amazon diesel heaters for like okay. an RV or a small area or whatever. And he was doing like tests on it and whatnot. Basically, he was heating his 1,600 square foot home at $90 a month in diesel on it. Yeah, and yeah. plumbing it outside. of. Don't run it in your home. Okay. He so was I, plumbing the exhaust out. Um, so he had a 12-volt battery, and uh-huh. then he just had a tender on it to keep it up. And he was only spending 90 bucks a month in fuel. That's pretty fucking awesome. Damn, that's it? That's it. Can you think about it? And, and like the ones on Amazon of, were like 140 to 170 some bucks. Diesel, like what kind of heater? Like a like a torpedo heater? Or? No, it's just a uh, sorry, it's just a diesel um, little heater, and it actually has a fan and a blower, and he has it plumbed into his home, and then he has the exhaust going outside. Damn! So I have it's like pretty efficient. I got one of those torpedo heaters that, are, that yeah. every shot. Oh no, those smell like shit too. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was actually it. It looks it, it looks like a suitcase welder, almost like a TIG welder, you know. How, like how, twenty uh, by twenty. What kind of space do those things kind of heat up? He did a sixteen hundred square foot home. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty fucking present. Ninety dollars. Ninety bucks is what he spent in diesel fuel. In house. Yep. Out yeah. of that, a month. That's not bad. And it was in the winter. Yeah. And snowy as fuck out. So wherever he was at, it's pretty cold. Yeah. Anywho, if you're looking for a uh, alternative, that might be it. So I Amazon. Have- I have a big, you know, unit in my shop, but really? I also, uh, <laughs> yeah, like you did that. Um, Dragon. <laughs> put it on the table. Um, I, I'd have a small unit in my shop that, that'll, that'll, so one ton, I okay. think, or something okay. like that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what the fuck. Sure. My, one of my best it's friends is an AC unit. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't use that word anymore. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. It keeps things moist. <laughs> <laughs> what size shaft does this unit have running it? <laughs> and so, so I have like my thermostat in my studio yeah. because it's like the most like closed off and insulated yeah. room to hopefully not run it all fucking night heating up the shop, which is kind of like it's metal. It's a tin built or metal building, mm-hmm. but it has insulation. But you know, just the typical shit they put right, in there. Right, right. And then I run like a one of those torpedo diesel. Like propane right. or not propane, uh, kerosene like diesel jet engine looking yeah. fucking things. And I use that to kind of like because when you turn the paint booth on, as you know, it just right. sucks the heat oh, out fuck, of the shop. Gone. Yeah, right. So <laughs> instead of that, the AC unit or heater unit trying mm-hmm. to keep up with it, I just run the diesel. Yeah, and uh, yeah, chill out. I've been a painter for so long that I don't smell things. <laughs> so like, there could be a gas leak in my house, and I'm right. just like, it fucking, ain't happening. <laughs> you find a match, you'll find yeah. it. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. So I, I don't. I can smell, but I don't, it doesn't bother yeah. me. You know, people walk in my shop and I go, Ooh. Oh, I get it. Yeah. You know, <sighs> Check it's it a out. decent unit though. <laughs> it's a decent unit. <laughs> it I, works. Got my, I got my money's worth for, for its fucking, age. It works for the <laughs> <laughs> slap it around. It's actually, I do have to slap it around sometimes to get it to come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't we all <laughs> fucking, uh, it's a nice rigid <laughs> from Home Depot. The plumbing brand. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I've had it for about fucking four years. <laughs> keep it filled up. And, keep it filled you know, up. It'll, uh, it'll keep you warm. Are we still all talking about heaters? <laughs> I was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Back on task here. <laughs> well, having, like, I have a big, like, my shop is uh, the, the, what? Well, it's like 1,500 square feet, but okay. it's like one big open area. Yeah. And then I have a paint booth, and then it's it's handmade. It's like a wood, you know, paint booth. It's probably it's probably this width, a little bit width smaller up to like. You're that. confusing the fuck out of me with your dimensions here. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, yeah. that's how non-machinist. Yeah. You definitely, yeah. We measure, <laughs> like, isn't this like an inch? It's pretty close to an inch right here, right? I'm like. Cause that's how I measure. <laughs> you measure. It's just, I have two of these. Yeah. And uh, anywho, okay. Decent nah, size paint booth. Decent size paint booth. I could. It'll fit a car in it, but okay. you know yep. it's small. Um, and then on top of it, we just built like a set, like a set of stairs, and created like the upstairs. Mezzanine. Yeah. And turned half of, uh, one side into like a a loft where I airbrush like okay. tins and oh, stuff, cool. and the other hat or the other parts of the studio. Mm-hmm. And then I have the floor, open floor. 
where I have a lift or two or two lifts and then I can fucking work on shit and right, whatnot. Right, right. Sand, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> so half the shop is kind of walled in and stuff. So like yeah. I said, the diesel healer just helps yeah. helps out because it's oh, yeah, like absolutely. three, four hundred dollar mm-hmm. a month. How do you month. keep your uh, sanding dust from going all over everything? I outsource sanding. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So I, I wet Man, sand. And it can just cover a shop like crazy. Yeah. I wet sand in house because yeah. that keeps sure. all the dust down. Yeah, right. And then if like, Say I have a, a whole Heavy bag. Heavy blocking out or something. Yeah, down my buddy's uh, shop. I have him pick it up, makes pay sense. him. It's just because I have so much electronics in my you shop now, too. Stuff all over. Yeah. Makes and sense. it's, there's nothing worse than dirty floors. Like, right. I cannot stand right. dust on the floor. I don't know how I can feel it through the rubber of my. <laughs> of your shoe. Of my shoe. Like, right. I, I just feel it. And uh, it goes back to the whole sweeping floors thing we were mm. talking about. And so I try to keep the dust to a minimum as possible. Okay. Um, I like that. I don't even like, because I have AC and heat, I don't open the doors at all either. Cause I don't want Same. like I don't shit do flowing shit. in the shop. Yep. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I always close that, o- that door when I'm doing anything dirty on the dirty yeah. side. Cause I don't want it to contaminate the other shop. Yeah. I mean, over here, I mean, you're grinding, sure. you got fucking, Absolutely. you know, all the shavings, which is yep. pretty I amazing. Try to keep shit cleaned out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's fucking precise, man. Yep. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> so new year man yeah what, eh, whatever I don't, it's another, another day yeah you know you, nothing nothing special like this year i'm gonna fucking now fuck no i'm gonna learn to read oh i barely can do that but i can machine like a motherfucker yeah. i know numbers but i'm like i can't read <laughs> nah it's just another day it is it is i i could i could attest to that it's uh if a, if, why a day, th- if a day changes you, yeah, yeah. I, I always wonder why, why it's so uh, prevalent, though. Like, why are so many people, like, connected? And, and mm. when I say why yeah. are so many people, I'm also talking sure, about myself. Sure. Um, are they ho- – I equate it to, like, uh, back in school. Okay. Remember? Yeah. You get to yeah. go away from summer. You get to change. Yeah. yeah. It's like a hard reset. Yeah. Or in your brain or something? I don't know. Or you try to make she it this one. You just do shrooms, and that's a hard reset. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> we did shrooms with my mom on Christmas the other day. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. How'd that go? She didn't take enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fault. Yeah. We were like, hey, take it easy. She's like, I like, used to do acid in my eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know what it is. Something about it, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I guess I like the idea of maybe not like I don't want to change who I am, but, mm-hmm. you know, maybe start making a fuck. I don't know. I don't. I, I just I, don't want to make the same mistakes I made. Yeah. I, just, I don't need a day for that or a new year. I can yeah, just, just remember. Do I it in the middle up. of the year. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's not do that dumb shit again. Every quarter you reset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I pay my taxes to the government, I'm like, oh, new me. <laughs> <laughs> Broke me. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, it's, just, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I think I would, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I think I lean more towards like, I guess because I'm, I'm naturally somewhat of a pro- procrastinator yeah, yeah. that I like to, I like hard set. You re- need a reason to restart. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like I was telling you, like I, I was that. trying to do some like videoing. You know how many GoPros I bought in my life because I want to be a YouTuber? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a YouTuber. Yeah, but you're going to have to be a YouTuber. Yeah. Sure. And I'm like, all right, if I get this GoPro, then, you know, we're going to we're gonna start a vlog. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do this. And then, like, the first yeah. one I got, I just, me and my wife, that's all we did. <laughs> <It's just laughs> angles, wide angle. <laughs> I feel we're on two different pages here. <laughs> I think this is more of that OnlyFans thing again. Dude, I'm just saying, like, if, if that was around whenever I was young and fit. You and know, then it would have been a thing? Well, I probably would have leaned into it. But I think ladies are into dad bods now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are they? I don't, I don't have one. I don't know. <laughs> must be fucking nice. And I nice. have a kid. Yeah. I've got two. <laughs> You have any kids? I have four. Yeah. How'd she do it? I don't know. You don't have a dad bod. Because she's from an island. They, she's from they an age island. age differently. Yeah, I was going to say, like... She's Japanese. When, when she said her age earlier, I was like, yeah. no fucking way. Uh, we age no real hard. <laughs> <laughs> so what was John F.K. like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Actually, that was holding. <laughs> Uh, what are you, uh, 60? No, 70? 72, yeah. I'm 40, so, like, I'm yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. like... I'm 39. I don't, I don't think of, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess I, I wrap my head around it so much sometimes because when I turn 40, it's the only age yeah. I've ever turned where I actually really, like... It hit you? It, it hit matter. me. Yeah, like, because when right. I turn 30, I'm like, fuck yeah. Right, right. That's true. You know, and then 40 came, and I'm like, man, why does my knee hurt? Is that should I, should I think about this? <laughs> is this his thing? Is this you know, it? right? Like, and then I, I then I, you know you think I, I've been a painter for twenty plus years, and so I'm like, well, how all those chemicals? Yeah, like oh fuck, yeah, I hear you. What's there. that? You know, I've had I've had like a <laughs> basically a chemical rash on my fucking back for my entire life from right. washing my hands with thinner. Oh fuck, yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, it's part yeah, of it'll catch up with you in another ten or fifteen. Yeah, and that's yeah. what sucks is like I feel like I'm gonna finally start making good money and, and get you're my be break. Happy and your shit's going. Yeah, and then I'm gonna, gonna die. Die. Yeah, that's I'm gonna die. Literally, life. That's how okay. it works. So you know what I mean. You're not yeah. the only one. There's another 19 billion people out there that feel the same <laughs> way. <laughs> you're not the only sob story, man. Oh fuck, man! I really wanted to be a. I, wanted, I thought I was gonna I go was somewhere in life. Oh no, 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 no! You're gonna die too. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think 40 is like. I think most of us realistically can look at 80 as yeah. kind of like a no. legitimate. Like, where do you? What's your like end goal? Like, what? How do you? On a perfect scale, when do you think you're gonna? Like, I want to go out before my body says. You're done. Like I okay. like when my body quits, I want to fucking be clocking out. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be like not able to do shit. Whatever the age that is. Well, I feel like I feel like if you I know. mean, if you've been fit your whole yeah. life, then you're probably yeah. gonna be good until your seventies and eighties, but yeah, no, I don't just, know. My, <laughs> my genetics are rather dog shit of the lottery. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice fucking hairline you got there, bud. It's called uh <laughs> Rogaine and Propecia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about genetics with all this. <laughs> My old man's balder and fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, I don't know. I just, I think it's, I think like I would rather my body go out and then just be like, all right, that's enough. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I would want to live on like a, no. you know, barely moving and shit like mm-hmm. that. But no. Nope. Well, what I was alluding to is just the concept of, you know, when I hit 30, yeah. I didn't go like, oh man, I'm halfway done. Cause I'm like, oh, well. Right, people 60. in their sixties sure. seem like they're still in. You're there. Yeah. This now I'm it. like, fuck. Like half life. Exactly. Thirty five was kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna think about it. You know. <laughs> right. And then forty, you're like, fuck. This is real. Like, this, <laughs> this is. You gonna eat happen. more salads, dude. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It just. You know, I'm like, I can't eat that bag of Starburst that I had <laughs> that you had <laughs> on the way up here. <laughs> <laughs> I already told you, sunflower seeds, man. Sunflower yeah. seeds, yeah. I got I got a whole fucking bag of like different nuts and seeds and yeah. Uh, yeah. and stuff that I brought on the trip just so I can like snack on so I wouldn't yeah. do the thing but they don't have sugar in them mm, to, nah, to wake me up a little uh, bit salt so. or sugar one or the other one or the other yep. okay yep well yeah I just wondered uh, <clears throat> what I don't know <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, I figure out whatever whatever it is whatever the I want to have like at least ten years of my life, like some not. How do I say this? Like, if I could just live ten years of my life, like money doesn't fucking matter. Just chilling, nothing doesn't matter. Yeah, you just do whatever you want. Like, not not say I'm rich, but like, but just yeah, you don't have to rely on a job to to do anything. To be be in my teens again, just no real responsibility. Right, right. You know, yeah, that'd be a ten year, ten solid years of enough money to live ten awesome years. Yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, that's kind of the hope. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Jesus. <laughs> Good fucking luck. Yeah, right? <laughs> you let me know how that works because yeah, I, I want I, I to jump on that train. Yeah, I mean, I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to put it out there in the universe right now. <laughs> oh, I got you guys. Sorry, back. I just totally shit all over your dream. Hey, no. good luck. I hope it happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, uh, I, was, I was complaining about taxes the other day and, uh, you know, very common topic yeah, in, sure, in sure. when you're forties. Right. Um, I wonder if they, you know, cause like, you know, after you get to certain, you make certain amount of money, they, you get in a different tax bracket. Uh-huh. I wonder as okay. inflation has grown, if they've if raised changes. the tax, right. like, that makes sense. cause I, I want to say, and I could be wrong. 
uh, but I want to say 70 grand is like one of those jumps okay. in tax brackets. And I'm like, 70 grand is like scraping by right, in, in, right. in, in Texas, Texas right now. Sure. So it's like for that to be mm-hmm. in. You know, a thirty percent fucking totally different, right? Yeah, your location definitely changes that number. Yeah, that's a that sucks, man. I don't know. If you make seventy grand in Kansas, you're doing pretty good. For real? Yeah, fucking a. Hell yeah, like real good. <laughs> no it? joke. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you make seventy k here, you're doing really fucking good. Real shit's cheap here. It like, is. It's real cheap. Everything's cheap. I feel like the gas is the same price. <laughs> yeah, but fucking homes here. For real. Homes are a third of the price of what you guys pay. Okay. So it's more the bigger, the bigger, the bigger, okay. Everything else is pretty much the same. You're right. Yeah, I was going to say, I, they can't yeah. necessarily just charge less for a Snickers here than they would somewhere else right, because, right, right. you know, map policies. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But homes, your yeah. big purchases are substantially cheaper here. That's wild, man. Yeah. Texas is just getting out of hand, dude. Yeah, there's no Straight way. Up. It's, nope. It's, well, uh, like when I was living there, I was like, you know, there's there's absolutely no way at any near point in my future that I could own a home here. Yeah. Like without having a roommate or all that bullshit. I was like, I don't want to fucking do that. I want my own place again. I was like, there's no, that's not, for me, I couldn't do that. I didn't want to live with somebody. Yeah. That yeah. I wasn't putting my wiener in. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> you know what I mean? True, true. <laughs> I never, I never had the, the, I did. I mean, if you took it off my rent, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a fair point, yeah. I mean, it ain't gay, right? Getting up, 20 bucks, hey, 20 dude, bucks. Fucking paying rent, man. Just don't like, look me in the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> don't fucking turn around. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, Austin, like, it, like you were you were saying, man, like that place is a, uh, it's fun. It's yeah, it's rad. It fun. It's yeah, just like definitely. L.A. and and right. these, all these great places. Like you go right. there, and you're like, fuck, man. Like I've always uh, equated to like you you plug into something, sure, like sure. energetic, like yeah. like you. I guess guys like yourself and I, you out here, you're a little bit more secluded than right. I am in Dallas. Right. But when I would go to California, I'd be like, fuck, man, like. You took just, the energy in from everything around. Yeah, you. and like I'm like sure. ready to do shit and, sure. and like. You know, of course, a lot of the guys in California, when I would go work out there, they're like, man, just <laughs> chill. Calm the fuck down. Yeah, it's like, calm right, down. Because right. like, like, they're living it, though. Yeah, exactly. You're not. Yeah, yeah, so I've always felt very motivated when I go to places. Like, New York does that for me. Sure. And, and I've... The strip club here <laughs> does that for me. The the shady the, lady. I feel the vibes. What was it? The shady yeah, lady? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. that it? It was the... Wa- or, uh, yeah, triple dub. Triple dub? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds rougher. <laughs> Oh, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Strip club names are like, that needs to be t-shirts, man. He might need one, too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to piss real quick. Yeah, yeah, me too. Head getting cold? Yeah. Yeah. It's bald shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I started shaving my head in high school. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Like, just to, for sports or because you were losing it? No, I just... Yeah. Like not, I didn't really start like receding until probably twenty six. That's about when I started. And then, but I got into wearing hats, and yeah. it fucked me because you can't wear them tight because you need blood flow. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it started like rubbing like this. Like I'd wear a hat right here, yeah. and it started like rubbing this hair out. I, I guess, huh? Rubbing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm not either. But I I just, like, it makes continue. sense. <laughs> so I would wear the hats all the time for like a, a, a lot of years. I just yeah. wear a hat. And then I feel like what happens is like a lot of males, their hairline will kind of come forward here yeah. and then back. Yeah. Like a and vampire. Yeah. It just yeah. kind of looks a little bit better. Mine just goes straight up. <laughs> and then. That's awesome. No, it you looks grow like. It out. <laughs> it's like if you had, you know how like the chin strap. Yeah. 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 Chin strap. If you here. just like had it. But it's like. <laughs> Up here. Yeah, I feel like I have just like this weird, it it just, it doesn't look right. So, uh, like, I tried to grow it out. My wife does hair for a living, so she was like, you should grow your hair out. And I'm like, whatever. So I tried a little bit. It got a little long, and it just (laughs) exposed more of the problem. And I'm like, I'm fucking over it. You know? I've actually, this this year, I've actually uh, spent a lot of this year just shaving, like, straight bald, like, razor and everything. And I, I, I mean, I've. I'm comfortable with that look, sure, though. I've sure. always had it, so it doesn't mean it doesn't. It's not that much to me, right, but it, right. 
but yeah, I've never, I've never really had hair. So <laughs> at least you can have a, you got a beard. Yeah, I can grow a beard <clears throat> yeah. and uh, and butt hair. A yeah, yeah, a hair. lot of butt hair. Well, it just keeps cool. coming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very. I'm not a hairy person though. Like I, I got like a nice Just two spots. I got a you got nice like an patch. Austin Powers heart, you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Honestly, my Ooh. nipples are hairy, and then I have a nice little soul patch in the middle. Yeah, and then God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything else is pretty chill. I'm visualizing it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, we can get naked. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're all right. <laughs> It seems to happen a lot in this shop. People yeah. don't say that. And I was like, Man, no, this, this shop gonna... really wants me to expose myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. Chris Hansen's going to pop out here in a minute. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I just never had, uh, I don't know. It sucks because you know what, what's weird is that, like, when I was a kid growing up, it's like you either had hair or you didn't, and it was right. no big deal. And then. Right. This whole beard and hair culture came into like big time. I, the male people get into the beard stuff yeah. and the oils and the whatever. Yeah, just all that. And I was like, "Fuck, yeah, <laughs> I want to do that." <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> yeah. When Instagram first started, there's like there'd be like these tattooed dudes, yeah. just like the chicks, the tattooed right. up dudes with right. the fucking suits and ultra fancy hair and yeah, beards. Per- perfect beards. Like the Santa Claus guys that are yeah, jacked yeah. And, and all. Yeah. Yeah, my God. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is our podcast. <laughs> just get the bottle. <laughs> we just need beer. I'll throw you my empties. <laughs> Only thing I want to hear from you is the sound of this beer opening up. <laughs> There we go. But yeah, I, I mean, it was it was a, I don't know, like I I was like fuck, like I guess when you yeah. like certain things like come and go, and it's like I didn't get a chance to kind of like try to. You didn't right, right. It was gone know. before it. You know, yeah, you I enjoyed mean, it. I mean, definitely, there's still like the the whole you know, Instagram like creating like the whole workout culture and things, yeah. like, which yeah. I would definitely want to be a part of more. I've, I've actually. Yeah. You're actually seeing a slimmer down version of yeah. myself. Yeah, there so you go. I've actually You just need to get into the testosterone and all that I stuff. I do actually. There you go. Yeah, uh-huh. I I I've been uh-huh. wanting to. Um <clears throat> I, I wanted to I wanted to try to push myself like working out and waking getting on a better New schedule. You, 2023. But I started in like October. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know. Um I like to like I did this in twenty nineteen. Uh I went on a bike trip with the homies and on that trip I was like, fuck it, I'm getting yeah. a gym membership. Yeah, so I, okay. I bought right one. On. And then one week ago was the first time I ever went in. Shut the fuck Still up. Still paid it the entire time. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> shit you not, 2019. you're going in. Just once, though. I've only been there yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, in December of last year, and now I guess we're doing this, 2021, I put, uh, I built like a, a dumbbell situation in my yeah. garage. Yeah. Like, just... A, a assortment of them when i was younger and i worked out a lot i always liked dumbbells more sure. than i liked of course. uh just yeah. free you weights, know, man i love that yeah and so i was like you know what if i put that there because i used to live in when i was telling you about the loft thing we had a dumbbell situation in the basement that was perfect yeah. and there was never anybody in there okay so i'd do that and then exactly one mile away was a 24-hour fitness okay yeah. so i would jog to that and Damn. then go work out on like i used I wouldn't rip, but I right. was in sure, shape. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> and I would use the cable machines and yeah. things like that, 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 you know, just working like rows and different things that would sure. fucking, I just didn't have access to. But so I put the dumbbell situation in the garage because I, I was like, if it's here every morning, you might just jump yeah. out there and do it. Exactly. And I've, yeah. I've been pretty consistent with it for the last like two there and a half months. But my brother is a, he's, trying to become a personal trainer, but he yeah. looks like me. <laughs> yeah. That's false advertisement. It is. It is. <laughs> no, no offense. I don't know you. And you know, he, <laughs> it's hundred percent false advertisement. Just, he, he, he can lift more than me because yeah. he does lift a lot, sure, but he just, sure. uh, he's like, I'm bulking dude. Yeah. He's yeah. It's like, bulking season. It's yeah. almost bul- that's my, what I say. It's bulking season. <laughs> but I, I actually, that's 12 only, ounces at a time. 12 ounces. <laughs> He uh he came he was he came out to the shop to like paint a skateboard for a white elephant gift yeah. kind of thing, and he asked me if I want to go to the gym. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. And yeah, he he gave me some. We worked out like yeah. it was the first time I like in a while that I felt Got like pushed. sore yeah. 
And I, I guess doing it with someone else, I was like, Always. fuck it, I have to do it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Versus myself, like, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that's the way I feel. Same thing yeah. every time. For real. Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> I walk. Uh, I do. My The biggest problem I have is drinking. And it's not because, yep. uh, like, You're we do alcoholic. podcasts. <laughs> Maybe. Well, definitely, like, clinically, yes. <laughs> But not like. What if you have like a couple drinks a night? You're an alcoholic, is no. No, no, not that. I'm. I, no, well, yeah, true. Because when I was going through DWI education I've had a class, pack since you got here, exactly. Yeah. So you're worse than me. What? I, I mean, I don't feel like an alcoholic. <laughs> but you got the German hair. I didn't have anything else to do today. Yeah. <laughs> I. Uh, so, like I, we host a bike night. Okay. So that bike night tends to be a place where I enjoy drinking because I'm around my friends yeah, and it's and a social a good time aspect, and it feels right? Good. Sure. And then we do podcasts with certain people in our studio. Yeah. That becomes a shit show. Yeah, I could see that. You know, like next thing you know, we have a beer pyramid going on, <laughs> right? And then like we're looking around, like what else is in here? You <laughs> exactly. Know what I mean? Exactly. And so that's what kills like my shit. It's like a. Hey, it's just useless calories. Well, see, I'm not in shape, and so right. I need to get. I need to lose weight to get to where you can enjoy that type of lifestyle exactly. daily. And, and it's not yeah. going to add up that way. That when I'm going sense. to work out every day, I'm yeah. like burning off what I'm taking in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Once trying. you're in shape. Yeah. It's easy to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I hope <laughs> I get it. I understand what you're saying, <laughs> but you know, I travel a lot too. Those that kicks my Traveling's ass too. Like horrible. I, yeah. I'm literally hoping that I'm going to be finding a hotel tonight. It has some gym in it so that I can do okay. something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, hmm. it's are one you, of those deals. Are you staying in town or are you going to head, head northeast? I don't know yet. See what the, yeah, how the, the wind the blows. Rings. We got some, we got some hotels around here. There's a couple, there's like a log cabin one down the road. And then the one across from the fucking <laughs> yeah, strip club. <laughs> did you pull it? Did you see it when I, you drove yeah, it? Yeah, I drove through That's that way. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> I've slept in that parking lot a few nights. <laughs> <laughs> I made it from the strip club to there and just said, I oh, fuck it. Uh, I'm going to sleep. Spot. Yeah. <laughs> Claim it for the night. <laughs> it's right down the road. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, like I said, I, I don't really want to drive too much at night. Not yeah. because I'm worried or anything, but sure. I, I like, I haven't moving. It's going to start east. getting slick too. And it's fucking raining all day. Okay. So maybe check that weather. Yeah, yeah moving east from that. here, like I just, you know, I haven't, I've never driven it or ridden it. So, like, I'm right. a very, like, sure, scanning, sure. I want to see it kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, so. that don't happen. Worst case, I might go to, what's the next town, the big town north of uh, Kansas? Kansas City. Kansas City, and there's another one north of it. Uh, well, Kansas City, you would head east if you're heading to Iowa. Yeah, but. You're not going to go to Nebraska. <clears throat> no, no, I'm not going to do that. But it's like. We've got. Toledo or some shit. we got Topeka coming Topeka, up. Topeka, that's We've got one. Lawrence and then Casey. Yeah. Or Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> I knew it was a T mm-hmm. and an O. <laughs> Topeka. No, Topeka is probably the one I probably... Well, yeah, actually... Topeka is about an hour and a half away. The, let me see. Directions. See what see what old the Google's... To Des Moines is. Yeah, it has me going straight through KC. That's crazy. I do want to go see the uh, graveside <laughs> of... Uh, Go to the Evil Knievel Museum, though, if you it's go there? to Topeka. Oh, in Topeka? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice. I mm-hmm. didn't know it was out here. Check it out. <clears throat> Where is the... Uh, <laughs> brain fart like a motherfucker. Okay. Uh, very famous movie about Kansas. Wizard of Oz? Wizard of Oz thing. Isn't it like east of on 70? Like from here, or is it in this town? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not here. Uh, Wizard of Oz, Jesus. There's I like a fucking. Uh, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like a I just can't think of some kind time. of Wizard of Oz land or some shit like that. Can you Google that? <laughs> you're like uh, the person Young on Jamie. Joe Rogan's. Yeah. Hey Jamie, can you uh, Google that for us? I don't know. I've lived here my whole life, and I know what you're saying, but. Dude, I've lived in Dallas my whole life and <laughs> in downtown, pack, uh, yeah. and I've never gone to the whole like JFK yeah. thing oh, down there. Got you. You know, I lived in downtown Dallas when they had the fifty year, uh, re- like not yeah, reunion. Not <laughs> reunion. <laughs> what do they bring half of them back? <laughs> yeah, like, hey, we're back. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, fifty year uh, anniversary, I guess is <laughs> <laughs> reunion tour. 
And I just remember uh, how, like, Osborne? I was born. Is that where it's at? No. Where's it at? Oh, Emerald yeah, where is the Wizard That's the of fictitious. Oz in Kansas? <laughs> <clears throat> Jesus. It was filmed in Hollywood. No, no, no. Well, no shit. <laughs> where was it? Please? In Kansas. Yeah. Well, you. it's just like there's a, there's a, like an Alice in Wonderland version of it here or some shit like that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She'll get Isn't it like the out. center of the United States around here somewhere? Oklahoma. It's Oklahoma? Like the geographical center of the, not world, but somewhere is in Tulsa. The geographical center is in Tulsa. That's probably of North America. Possibly. No time. Okay. Hold on. I'll go ahead. And- I want to say there's something in Kansas, like the geographical of just the United States somewhere. I don't know. I could be full of shit, too. Mm, I'm not know. from here. I'm yeah, just regurgitating old shit that I've heard. Hmm. We had a friend from Dallas that moved up here once a long time ago when he was a kid. He's like, yo, I live like right by the center of the United States, man. Huh. So I just. Liberal. Okay, liberal. <clears throat> kind of a shithole. Liberal. All right. I uh, got you. Got you. All right. Well, you know. <laughs> Wamingo, Kansas. Wizard Wamingo? of Oz Museum. Wamigo is the oh the museums in Wamigo, oh yeah. you're gonna head to, uh, basically as you go towards Manhattan and Topeka or whatever uh-huh. before you get to those you'll see a sign that says Wamigo yeah and it's, it's straight north like fifteen it's north miles of seventy yeah yeah oh that's cool I'm not gonna go I just yeah I heard about it I didn't even know they had one there <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy when you look into <laughs> the shit in your own state well like. A lot of these like Midwest city or town like mm-hmm. states like they they do these like crazy attractions right, to get right, people right. to stop in them and shit makes sense. And uh, Iowa's got a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, like that. I think Iowa has Popeye, right? Yeah, I think I so. And there. they also have like a fuck. What was that? I don't get me lying. It's just a bunch of weird <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? They it's do. Like, it's weird. Like the town of 1500 has this like reason for people to come there. Is what they're doing. And we'll go see the world's biggest ball of yarn. Dude. We have twine. We got the biggest Base. ball of twine. That's, that's and here? then we have the biggest check egg if you go out on Old 40. It's a big fucking egg. <laughs> it's huge. There's no reason to go to that town. But yeah, yeah we have it in the twine. The, the the first time I ever rode 70 from Colorado, like, yeah. we just, we left Denver and came straight over and then <laughs> right. down. And I just, it was the first time in my life I smelt... Uh, this the butcher or just oh, yeah, the, the cow meat farm, the meat, yeah huh? i was like yeah. god it's fucking horrible it just doesn't smell yeah it doesn't smell good at all and the yeah. feed lots and shit and then i remember the <laughs> 20 in 2020 uh we were all riding the sturgis and we went the the dodge city way uh-huh and then kind of like zigzag straight north and then uh I remember getting stuck behind a cattle truck oh, yeah, that was just bad. shitting all yeah. over me it shit on me oh yeah it's just pouring out of the it's back pouring of it. out yeah. like and and it's i was disgusting like, I'm like it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you drive by him, there's just like shit coming out it's of the just holes. dripping everywhere. It's yeah. like hell it's yeah, it's a thing. It's chicken a thing. chicken trucks are really bad, and then fucking uh, cattle haulers. Yeah, the cow. It's like you don't know it's shit and piss. Well, or, I'm guessing they probably just start shitting everywhere when they're getting ramrodded they, up in there. I don't. They know. probably hose it down so it's like shit water. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> well, they're probably pissing too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, either way you look at it, it's fucking gross. Yeah, it's like you get out of Texas uh, and Oklahoma where you're covered in grasshopper guts. Yep, <laughs> and, and they got big it. fucking grasshoppers Dude. too. They're hard. Yeah, they Jesus. hit. They hit. They feel like hell, like hitting you. You know, what <laughs> right? I'm saying? Like, like you, it's like you went and played paint go- paintball paint or gun. some shit. <laughs> exactly. Know? Very true. And uh, the other fucking gnarly dude. <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh, dude, uh, it's wild. Yep. So what are you gonna? I know that you don't have any New Year's resolutions oh, no. because you're too cool for that. Yeah, 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 um, obviously. But, I mean, like, you got to, like, what How? What do you What do you do this year? What, what's the plan? Um, Just do better than I did last year. Make shit work Sounds like a res- me. resolution to me, dude. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> new year, new me. Yeah. <laughs> no. Or 2023, yeah. <laughs> no, uh... I don't know. I mean, just make sure 
keep doing what I'm doing. Like, yeah. that's like I said, that's why I lived here for a year. I want to make sure this works and takes off and I don't overextend myself. Um, my prototype parts, yeah. I've got ideas, I've got drawings, I've got prints, just don't have the time to do it. Um, this winter, we're very busy from where I thought we were going to be, which is yeah. fucking great. But I thought that this was going to be the time for me to do my parts. Okay. Um, that's awesome. I don't have time to make them because I'm making money off of other stuff and mm-hmm. the business is working for itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at some point, we do have to do those parts because I think that's going to help out a lot and then it'll kind of get, you know, my ideas out there. And um, I guess my my goal would be to do more of the metalworking, yeah. machining, fabricating, and the prototypes. And then, you know, <clears throat> let someone else take over the repair side. Yeah. Um, be there when I need to be there. But I want to designate my time and my skill to what I'm better at my and what I love to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind doing, I don't give a fuck if I've changed oil or tires. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. It's money pays a bill, but I love and what drives me is making things. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. I want to make shit. Yeah. That would be my resolution is to make more <laughs> cool shit. Yeah. In 2023, let someone else do the other stuff. Are you thinking about any like bills this year? Um, yeah, I have a couple like, I want to do a land speed bike of some sort. Mm-hmm. I haven't quite figured out exactly the class or the category I want to run in. And then I do have a 1931 Harley in the window mm. that I want to go ahead and build. So that's just going to be a is personal a, bike. Is it a flathead? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not going to put a flathead in it. You I'm going to do? do something different. I don't yeah, know. Mate? And it's going to make... <laughs> what's that? <laughs> What's a, what's that? What's that? No, I'm gonna uh, I'm probably gonna hurt a lot of feelings on the purest side. What I'm gonna do to it? Yeah, fuck them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that thing was going to the junkyard. So who gives a fuck what the purists think? Yeah. It was literally getting thrown away and crushed. Damn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it back into a rideable motorcycle. Mm. I don't know what motor, but it's gonna be small. It's gonna be supercharged. It's just going to be really fucking rad. <laughs> supercharger, just threw it in gonna there. Build, yeah, yeah, obviously. I'm just going to throw a supercharger in there. i um, going to build a gnarly little girder for it. Nice. Um, leave it ratty. Probably all the carbon steel that I build it with, I'm just going to pre-rust it. Okay. Spray it down. That, that sounds fun, yeah. Because it's rusty and dirty and old. I don't want it to be clean or nothing. Build some tanks, build some skins and... I don't know. That's that's gonna be my bike. <laughs> Another one. So what what would you say, Girder or Springer? Which one is Girder. cooler? Girder. Girder, Fu- Girder yeah. rides better. It Fuck, does. Fucking Springers are cool. They look good. They're pleasing to the eye. But a Girder, I feel like Girders look cooler. But I guess it's also like Girders the less ride you see, you don't see them as much as Springers. <clears throat> I mean, look at look at the amount of movement and where the movement is at. You know what I mean? You're not transferring movement from the axle clear up to the trees. Yeah. That it's is taken. stationary, and then it's moving itself. Okay. Um, girders, I, I personally feel ride way better. You don't get that springer bounce. You don't, you, you don't recoil off of it, mm-hmm. even with a dampener. Nice. Um, I, I like girders. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I, I, one of my friends turned me... I didn't know the... I didn't really know much about them, and... Uh, he turned me on to it because he was having one built. He he did, he was doing the People's Champ thing for yeah. uh, Born Free. Cool. Didn't make it all the way, but yeah. he was like just on the podcast. One of the original right, guys that was right. coming on, he was telling me all about his plans. Like, I'm going to do a girder front end. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. yeah. And, well, uh, there's a lot of variations. There but is. Basically, there is. it's the same idea is both of what you would call your down tubes or down bars cycle on the upper and lowers together. Yeah. And, and I've seen like, like, how uh, because there's a company in fucking italy that makes like high-end performance looking ones that are like running like radio brakes and they're kind of billet fucking arms many very yeah i've seen cnc machined legs all kinds of crazy shit but it all comes down to the same idea you know yeah same like basic motion right the fork legs move together uh one of my uh good friends out of dallas uh i want to say he he built a girder i could be fucking making mistaken but (laughs) He did a Sportster, uh, Corey from Main Drive Cycles. He built like a Sportster a couple of years ago. He took it to Giddy up. I want to say he had a girder on the front That's end of cool. that. Very cool. But just, I don't know, like it, it's unique. I, sure, I feel like sure. in a sense, you just don't see him as much. You don't much. see him. No, yeah. not at all. You don't see that stuff at all. 
And I mean, especially like you, if you think about like half of like maybe even 70% of the vintage chopper right. world, it's like repurposed things. It's not sure one off sure. things. And no, you're exactly right. Uh-huh. And so like, I, I feel like there's not a lot of girder front ends laying around places. You, no, not at all. You know? Nope. Like the girder I have on my little sporty chop. Um, this old dude here in town had it. <clears throat> he said it's been on the wall for like 30 years. Um, and he's, and I was like, you want to sell it? And he's like, no, he goes, I'll give it to you. If you put it on a bike that you're not going to sell and make money off. He's like, I want you to have it. I don't want you to make money on it. Um, so this is, this is many years ago when I was, you know, kind of a younger machinist and it was in a wreck. So I straightened the legs and then the axle end was like elongated, like an egg because it beat the fucking hole out so bad, you know, oversized it, bored it, sleeved it put it together for three quarter modern Harley wheels. And I've been riding the fuck out of it ever nice. since. Yeah. So that shit's cool. Yeah. You know? And that's probably an early seventies PMP is probably what it was. Mm-hmm. But dude, I mean, it's tough. I mean, you can snap the clutch, pop wheelies and slam it back down. And so they just, it like, hadn't abs- even broke off yet. Yeah. It just <laughs> absorbs it better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I got, you were talking about how like the movement yeah. where the movements at. you're not relying on a rocker to move into the axle and then the spring and then the rebound spring, you know, they move together. They all work together at one point. Yeah. I yeah. would say like, I've seen some very loose springers. Yeah. They just, yeah. they, that, seem I, it's janky. not, yeah, I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they I, look cool. Spot. They do look cool. I love the look. You know? Yeah. I, like, like the digger wouldn't look right with a girder. It yeah. looks right with a twisted square yeah. springer. It just looks right. And the big fat fucking crazy rocker on it. Yeah, the rockers. Those are the ones that yeah. like sometimes you see some fucking gnarly. Like, well, the gnarly ones are all sugar bears or sugar yeah, yeah. bear style or someone copied or whatnot. But yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I've, I've been into the girder thing for a while, and I, I thought about doing it on this FXR thing. Yeah. Um, what? I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> and so... What year FXR it's in first? 85. Okay, okay. 85... What are you going to do with the back of it? Still leave it all swing arm? Yes, unfortunately, yeah. for yeah. the chopper guys. Yeah. So, what I want to do... The only thing that the FXR that I want people to notice is a triangle. That's it. Sure, sure. But I want to... identifying factor. Yeah. I want to create some type of... Some type of rear fender that does not look like an FXR or a Dyna or any of that. Like, I don't want it to be any of that. But I want to have the creatures, the comfort that I need. Like, the ability to put some kind of sissy bar on there. And a passenger if I need to, but I don't want the complete wrapped fender. You need to do like a cafe tail on it. That's what I was thinking about something like that. Yeah. Um, and I got an idea. So I, like I, I had, I bought an FXR a long time ago that had a, like a duck tail fender on it. And like, I was like, I fucking like this. Yeah. I like this. (laughs) And then when the fat, the newer fat bobs came out, they have like a kind of a duck tail fender as well. And so I was thinking about taking a newer fat bob fender and narrowing it and then kind of cleaning it up and making right. some kind of strut system that kind of flows with the triangle yeah. and the way the neck is. But it's like you were saying earlier, like, right. got to get the wheels, which I have. I I, I know where they're at. What I you just, need to do, no, you need to do, what would visually look really good is if you made a fender or tail section and you got rid of the side outboard shocks and did a mono shock on it. So you had a super open rear wheel, super open swing arm, super open fender. Yeah. But you had your triangle because then that's going to stand out more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it's kind of all in. It's it's open to <laughs> versions right now. The Cafe uh, FXR. I think that the the swing arms on the FXR is they pivot through the transmission block there, so they're, just they're make pretty a solid mount on it. Tuck, oh, okay, yeah. on the back. Just get rid of the the rubber setup. Just yeah. put a solid. You have machinist buddies. I do. Yeah, they can make you a solid block to mount off of and yeah, be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those like uh, we were talking earlier. Fucking like rubber mount. Job. I'm not. Hey, look, I fucking <laughs> I gotta ease my way back to fucking straight metal to metal. You know what I mean? So when I ride an FXR, I'm like, oh. Ugh. There's nothing I like better than my ass end of my bike doing this because of rubber mounts blow it out. It's so awesome. Yeah, everybody everybody talks about how great FXRs ride, but I've 
I've had that same problem, like the little walkout situation. Yeah. But it's like rubbing, riding a fucking water balloon at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, like I think I was saying earlier, like I, I wanted to do this trip to kind of like everybody that I'm doing podcasts with is right. chopper based. That's, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Right. And uh, you know, yeah, I have a lot of knowledge and understanding of the way the world is now, but I don't, I, I wanted to kind of do this trip to kind of, get into your mindset sure, and sure. see your setup and sure. see what turns your gears, if you right. will, and uh, see your bikes and see those right. details that you don't see on Instagram. Sure, sure. And, you know, just try to get a taste for it. Like, yeah. like admittedly, like, I'm, I'm not doing my frame. Like, I'm not a, I'm not sure. a fabricator. Yeah, absolutely, sure. Um, but uh, I'm fortunate to have a lot of rad friends that do right. badass do stuff. And so oh. this, this kind of build is more or less – and and I'm gonna be open with it the whole time. Like I'm one of those guys. I'll never sit here and say I built this bike. Right, right. I'm like, oh well, yeah, we we did this bike, and you know, my my buddy Brian TBJ built the tank for me. Sure. And this, and trust me, I want to learn how to do these things. Absolutely. But right. I only you have know your limitations. I do. And you're fine yeah. with saying I got help here and I got help yeah. here. And I did this and did this. I can't paint like you can paint. You know, I would you never can still say fucking I can do paint that. though. That's pretty rad. Well, I, yeah. I didn't when I saw your paint. I was like, well, oh, did you see the nick in the side of that tank? My red chopper fell over in it. Oh, that's fuck. the only fuck up in on that the, on the candy. on the gold one. Oh shit! I'd, yeah, just leave it, dude. You earned it. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyhow, but yeah, no, like I, I'm sure I yeah. know you can do some shit. I couldn't touch that, but we all have our expertise. Yeah. And, there's no reason, you know, to not bring people in and to learn how they do it. Yeah, and I, this bike, I mean, I don't. I hope that's something I don't have to sell. That's kind of the the that's that's. Don't the hope. oversell the first bike you build of any type. Keep it if yeah. you can. If you absolutely can. My biggest regrets are selling bikes that I built, and not even full builds, but I built a bike. And it just, was like the first one I did of like that. Just don't fucking sell it. Just the importance even, of it. Yeah. Dude, like if you sell for like 2500 bucks or three grand or five grand, that money's gone so fucking fast and that bike's gone forever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like That's do whatever point. you can to hold on to your yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's bikes for flipping and selling and then there's shit that means something to you. Yeah, well, that's a good point. I think that I, I really do hope to uh, keep this one as a uh, – I'm a very sentimental person. Yeah. Like everything, like I'm the guy that'll have like shit that you can give me a napkin at one point. Right, I'm like, right. oh, it meant something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm that <laughs> right, way. Right. So, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I guess the idea behind this is I'm bringing some friends and some people that's been on this podcast. It's that I've done, a, you know, that they've been riding with me from day one on it. Right. And, uh, you know, each one's kind of doing this and doing that. And then kind of coming together. The hardest part for me is that I'm very design particular. Sure. So sure. I'm also like. You're controlling the I'm, project. Yeah, I'm controlling right. it, but I'm also trying to be like. <laughs> I get You that. know, let them do their fucking thing. I just right. don't know if I want them to try new shit on my stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. That's that's but, the reason I have a problem working with people. Yeah, is, I mean. It's the same thing. Yeah. I, you know. Say like I used to when I, I apprenticed for tattooing a long okay. time ago when I was younger, like yeah. almost twenty years, fifteen, sixteen years ago now. And when I worked at a tattoo shop, everybody there would give me fucking banger tattoos sure. and you know working together. And then when I started having to go pay for them, it was I just good. never got yeah. like that same quality. And sure, so I've always sure. been jaded on working with people because yeah, right, right. And it's also how it shaped me to be like where I'm at. Like I want people because I've had that experience of like paying sure. an artist, right, and seeing quality change, yeah, and, and the amount of give a fuck change, exactly. So I want a situation. I want to always give a hundred percent and whatever I'm doing within their parameters of. Sometimes people have ideas that just don't sure. lend itself to be as popular as others <laughs> right there's a reason why gold looks good <laughs> right so gold like can't you know candy gold right. on anything and then the right a uh, couple colors like it, it's a fucking home sure. run every time sure. green <laughs> right sometimes ain't gonna hit you know you're getting a fucking base hit dude maybe right. a, maybe you know second base on that one you know what i'm saying <laughs> right so it's tough yep. i get it i get it definitely <laughs> it's the uh. baddest bike you ever built and the guy goes uh, let's let's paint it green. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Green's a pretty color, but it's just got a bad. Yeah, it's very hard to put it on something that it goes with mm -hmm. that well. 
Green bikes are bad luck anyway, right? Yeah, that you heard the, the heard the reason why it is? <laughs> why? Because in the time frame they were making green bikes, they were making so many for the army. Yeah. That those were the most people common. That were dying. That was the yes. most common bikes on the road. Yeah. Uh, that was getting wrecked. And oh, so it was just gotcha, a statistic. Gotcha. It was oh, a right statistic on. thing, not huh. so much a an actual yeah thing thing. Not like everything was on an even pace of going forward. <laughs> right. And green just sucked. <laughs> but they were making green. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. I mean, if you think about back in the day, like those old Harleys, like. Yeah. The the kind of darker green than sure, that, but like sure. that army green was like was it a factory All over color. The place. That makes sense. You had black in that color, pretty much. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for another history lesson today. <laughs> it's not a good one. I, I I feel like I need to polish it up a little bit, but it's uh there you really is, need to work on that side. Yeah, I need to work on the delivery. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Not quite Rogan yet with the <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah, like... We're, we're working on it. <laughs> start reciting med, uh, yeah. medical fucking pills. We haven't, we haven't pills. smoked enough weed and drank enough whiskey. <laughs> Dude, whiskey. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought whiskey was going to help me stop drinking as much. How that worked. On a podcast. Yeah. I doubled down. Went, See, that's the thing is I drink it at the same speed I drink beer, so then I'm really fucking fucked. So, so that's, that's exactly what I the concept was at first. Like, I was like, all right, if I... If I drink whiskey, yeah. I don't drink it as fast as I drink beer. Yeah. And then I got good at it. Uh, and then I and did then drink it. Fast. And then I was like, fuck, dude. Like I I've gone. <laughs> nah. That's I've still actually dangerous. I've I've gone so <laughs> <laughs> me and my buddies, we, we me and my buddies, we do like another podcast on our YouTube that's like a it's called the Quaint Zone, which is my yeah. Wi Fi yeah. code. Okay. You just, just told everybody that. Yeah, yeah. There's numbers on the end. Get, guess them. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, so. gotcha. 6969. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, it's like the router dictated this. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. So, no, we, we have a, we do this podcast on, on YouTube. It's just me and two buddies, and yeah. we just shoot the shit. And one day, stupidly, <laughs> uh, we decided to do a podcast together. <laughs> and, I get me a fresh bottle of Jameson, which is my jam, Oof. and uh, there's a level, there's a there's a, a point you get where racism <laughs> is n- normal. <laughs> After so much whiskey, yeah, it's like it's like uh, happy, <laughs> in love, racist, hurt everybody's feelings. <laughs> not nah, definitely not racist. I got I got black kids, so I'm good. I got the ultimate uh, card. Um, oh hey. But, uh. But Are no, uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Hope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're creamy. Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we did a podcast and I, I was drinking whiskey and kind of in my feelings that yeah. day about some yeah. other shit uh, going yeah, on yeah. and yeah. they're all headed. Yeah. I didn't get too racist. Dangerous. It was, it was fun racism. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that depends who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> what well, side of the fence? <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I can't do, I can't drink I, i'm now i'm i'm i enjoy the taste it's like when sure, i first started drinking sure. beer i didn't enjoy it and right, then right now eventually just, it's like oh my god i'm just god, craving a fucking amazing. beer right now yeah. you know yeah. and it got to a point with that with whiskey and then so recently i sure. i went on the uh i want a really dark beer yeah so i started doing guinness Ugh, gross oh fucking chew my beer <laughs> <Chew it. laughs> that's disgusting i just want to drink it and enjoy it Get a little tipsy and go the fuck to bed. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I wanted to chew it yeah. and I wanted to I wanted to have the the beef jerky of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. You gotta floss after you drink that motherfucker. <laughs> I keep those little picks with me, dude. And so Did you guys uh, eat jerky, no, I drink a Guinness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, my wife took me we went to like a I've never been a beer nerd, right? Yeah, yeah nah. Do y'all have breweries out here and that shit? Yeah, yeah, they're all over. Do you um, ever, you ever been to one and watched a beer nerd? Yeah, they buy a flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, yeah. sample and taste. Yeah, like a wine nerd, yeah. right? And I'm like, I'm not. It's weird. I don't want to be that person. So, <laughs> but then I got sucked into it though, because <laughs> and you became it. <laughs> I, I'm. This is my fight against it. So, yeah. we went to this pizza joint that's like also got a brewery, and my wife got a flight. And I would let her, I would try hers and then just yeah. get a whole pint of whatever okay. it was. That way I kept kept my <laughs> kept man it, card, yeah. right? And yeah. then I like I did an Oktoberfest of some sort. I was like, did it again? I'm like, fuck, it's, it's delicious. Becoming a habit. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I hate when people figure shit out that works, yeah. and then I'm just like too against the grain. Yeah, sometimes like, I I make myself engage in things I wouldn't normally engage. Yeah, in. you have to. Another cool story. Um, 
I'm a very, very picky eater. Yeah. Like most things that people love in life, I'm like, eh. I eat everything. That yeah. What it is. I'm, I'm picky Anything. as shit. I grew up on chicken nuggets. I just ate a can of ravioli. I just opened up and <laughs> just spooned it out straight when you were setting this shit up. Wow. Yeah. I love your grit. <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> so I tried deviled eggs for the first the time. fucking best thing ever. First time in my life this Christmas. <clears throat> and I was like, you know what? I told him, I was like, if you're going to make them, I'll try them. And I tried one. I'm like, fuck, this is so good. So fucking good. 40 years old, dude. <laughs> you never had a devil. The egg? first time I ever had a devil day. Jeez. But I was making it. I don't know if it was on a podcast or not, yeah. but I, I'm, I was making the analogy that like, I got to enjoy something that you've enjoyed your whole life for the first, first time. time. You know how fucking awesome that and is? To enjoy something as an adult, I think, is a different enjoyment than a child. Exactly. Yeah. So you really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, like I was a like. Does, a kid likes it, but you enjoyed it. No, I'm just like, you know. Yeah. The thing about when you're Makes adult sense. is like yeah. you can like go buy it and have you sure. can you yeah. can indulge in it yeah. 100%. So like you can be like I'm going on a devil egg. Can ding. you buy deviled eggs at the store? No, but I have thing? I have a wife. You can? Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay. Well, right. shit. I guess you can. I don't know. I never they don't really it. sell those anywhere, do they? Like if you go to like BJ's restaurant or some shit. <laughs> like, I want I want I want 12 deviled eggs. Yeah. With extra sugar. Now when I go somewhere and they have deviled eggs on the sugar. menu, I'm like Sugar on it? Yeah. Okay. Think about it. I'm open minded. No, I'm, I'm open minded. He's open minded. I'm open minded. Sugar. Ugh, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. That's good you're open minded. I I'm, eat her weird food. I never What's even, your weird food? Never Well, I make Chamorro food. Yeah. Because I'm from Guam. So I never even like I didn't eat that shit. Like yeah, barbecue sauce is spicy for me. Oh, you know? you're a manis. Ketchup, ketchup. All right, barbecue sauce. You wouldn't survive in Dallas. Dude. I jumped. How'd you make Austin, dude? How'd you survive in Austin? Uh, Coke and beer. Coke and beer. <laughs> <laughs> it really Just, numbs yeah. the inside of my yeah. throat. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's Austin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She eat, she's been eating German food, which is very unusual for her. Yeah, you know, German's got I, like. I made. Um, I've never had meatloaf. I just she had meatloaf that. for the first time ever. Yeah. yeah, that's a trigger food for me. Yeah. Galushkis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. very and good. I'm also, what is that thing? Chicken fried steak. She's never oh, had a chicken fried shit. steak. Yeah. Did that not like uh, do something for you? Yeah, chicken yeah. fried steak's yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. I'm kind of ruined on chicken fried steak. I had a. I like chicken fried chicken better. You have Grandies up here. Grandies. Grandies. Hmm. It's a fast food, like home cooking, home cooking mm-hmm. thing that, that we have. That amazing. It we does. One. It it yeah, yeah it did it did is what I'm getting at it <sighs> did and then I had a chicken fried chicken one day and had the biggest piece of fat on the chicken. Yeah. And it grossed me out for life. It's Just been fat. Fifteen. Yeah, I don't like fat on my steak or anything. I love it. I'm fucking weird, dude. That's I told you I'm picking your flavors shit. at. They say that, but I get flavor out of a one sauce. <laughs> so, you're not wrong. Yeah. So it's like, and I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Teach their own, I yeah. guess. <laughs> I'm just glad you're not a meat Nazi like everybody else. <laughs> you did that to your steak? <laughs> no, no. Oh, my I God. Love added flavor. Yeah, it's like, well, hey, man, if you cook that chicken right, you don't have to dip it in barbecue yeah. sauce. That's what I did yesterday. I got uh, four double cheeseburgers from McDonald's, extra ketchup, and dip them in barbecue sauce when I get home. What the fuck? And you're talking about working out, or is it like how you maintain a nice physique? I don't really know. Um, it just works. It's four double cheeseburgers and barbecue sauce. Yep. Oh, man. That's bullshit. Yep. It happens. It's bullshit. 100%. <laughs> and, and Bud Lights. It works. Yeah. I got to slow down on that. You're almost, you're almost on a 24 pack now. Almost. No, I don't think I get a little bit left. You have yeah. more. Devil, yeah, I have more. Deviled eggs uh, was, was a nice addition. Uh, Sour cream changed my life. That was a I, I brought sour cream into my life about twenty nineteen at a Michael Lichter show, actually. I can pinpoint it when wow. I tried it. We were at the Michael Lichter show in twenty nineteen and I was starving. <laughs> and cause we 
got caught up in a ride and traffic yeah. and didn't hit lunch or whatever before we made it to uh, the literature show. Yeah. And so they were walking around passing out like samples or free yeah. shit. And then I was like so hungry. I was like, fuck it. I was it. like, holy shit. Sour cream is amazing. It is. I, Best I, thing ever. Y'all have Chipotle up here, right? Yeah, yeah I got Qdoba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, even better. Yeah, we got both. Qdoba yeah. and our Chipotle is just all as dirty as fucking yeah. something. Yeah. I Chipotle mean, used to have their shit looks, together. It's ridiculous. It used to be like the, the, the fucking... Cadoba's Chip- nachos are better. Like their yeah, cheese they, And they have ground beef. That's the one thing Chipotle doesn't have is ground beef. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm st- <laughs> What are we going to eat tonight, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Chipotle used to be the chicken Chick-fil-A okay. oh, of the really? burrito, Jane. That makes sense, yeah. They they felt they were clean. They had their shit together. Yeah, yeah. and everything's just a fucking disaster. Now it's like they it's just, yeah. The whole store's a fucking mess. I go in there every once in a while because we have one in, in my town. I'm like, you know, trying to eat and shit. And then they have, uh, I get my food and then they tell me they don't have fucking like right. the Whatever things that you need. To, like you ordered meat. We don't have meat. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> We're out of tortillas. <laughs> so you're going to have to have it in a salad bowl. Yeah, they, they didn't have forks, dude. I had a bowl. I'm like, you should have told me you're only doing burritos. Cause you don't have in general is going yeah. to dog shit in the last five years. It's so bad. I mean, it's so bad. Terrific. How, how, do you do you guys have a like a, a decent service thing up here? In Our sir, it is fucking horrible. For real, like it, it's like uh, our, our local Mexican restaurants are really good, yeah. but like any of the chain stuff, no. don't even fucking go. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same, yeah. same. Don't even go. It's it's sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because majority of the time we do. Yeah, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah, that's sad. that's a sad thing, man. Because it, you know, <laughs> fuck. It's just so nice to get served sometimes. Yeah, it's all. I just want to sit there, drink a fucking beer, and get my food. But then yeah. it just turns into dog shit somehow. Yeah, fucking. If 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 Chick Fil A can figure out how to do it so well and have less religiousy. Yeah, yeah, just cut out the Jesus maybe, stuff. Maybe they should be open on Sundays. Would be fucking great. It's, I don't know. I don't. I just don't understand how like someone can have a, a method that works mm-hmm. and other people not go. This works really. Fun. This works well. We should probably adopt this like game plan. I don't plan. like their uh, like when they wear the vest and they're like in the line, you know, like bring you in along your or, yeah. They're like in your fucking face in your car. It's like until I hit that sign, I'm trying to make my mind up. Like leave me alone when yeah. I'm behind the sign. You're like on the highway still yeah, getting fucking, off. <laughs> I guess, right. I'm, I'm like no, just wait till I hit that sign and then you can bother yeah. me. Yeah. Have you have you noticed this that uh, I, I don't know if you have noticed up here, but in Dallas like. <laughs> Almost every major food place now has double and even triple lines. Yeah, there's always lines, tons. So it's like, it's just an att- it's a testament to like how much like mm. our population is growing to where like, you know, everything's busy all the time everywhere. Yeah. Like they have to have double lines in a fucking Whataburger. I, I, I and think shit. they're everyone's just short staffed. I don't think there's enough employees to keep up with the workload. So, well, yeah, add that. But at right. the same time, these restaurants that are kind of staples for yeah. lunch have like almost more lunch. We don't have that here. Yeah, it, I we mean, just still have. It's insane. The it problem does. here is if you go to fucking lunch at McDonald's, you got to wait on the old people that get free coffees all day. It's like you get free coffees. Do you have to get out at eleven thirty to twelve thirty? Like, yeah, can you yeah. just come on, dude? Who Do are, it at six a.m. Yeah, like your yeah. dad did. I appreciate. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate all the work you did, but like, <laughs> let You're the people who have to get up, back yeah. to work in their thirty-minute lunch get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking up the flow, shit, man. Yeah, yeah. That's nah, the way. that's uh, what we have to do, deal with here. Not so much, you know. Do you have like good like mom and pop restaurants up here? Uh, Is it up nah, and down? No, not where the fuck. Nah, we don't have shit. So how long are you gonna deal with this before you like? Make a move. Decide to fucking jet somewhere else? I don't well, majority know. majority of the time, I cook. Oh, okay. So I cook. You, yeah. What's your, you like, are you a grill I guy grill, or I'm what? I'm a grill yeah. guy. I am a grill guy. I yeah. can't grill for shit, dude. I tried. I'm quite impressed because I'm a, I'm a charcoal girl. And I just like, said. Oh, yeah, I have a gas grill. I was like, mm. Mm. She wasn't happy. No, but I'm really happy. fucking good and on it. And then he <laughs> grilled and I was. Like, I know how to handle my meat. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You oh, don't, yeah. you don't make the thirty nine without it, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> I. Uh, this is gonna sound gay. All uh, right, I'm into. I want to learn how to make sauces. 
Sauces? Like sauces to put on the meat. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like spit? <laughs> <laughs> Jergens, dude. Uh, glazes. Glazes or like uh, rubs. And all rubs. That stuff? Like, like that things that like the flavor up your meat. <laughs> what kind of meat it's, do you eat? <laughs> uh, I, I'm a steak guy and chicken. Okay, chicken yeah, steak. Yeah. Uh, I love like making do you things like, like pork chops and stuff. Or not? I do, but uh, I guess it's like because I've only like been cooking yeah. for maybe a year or two. It's like I just uh-huh. I look at like pork as like I don't really understand yeah. the meat very much yeah, to yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. get the right temperatures and shit. But sure. my wife cooks the fish in the house. I cook the chicken and the steak. Okay, and uh, yeah, I just get to this point where like I, I want. To I, I love Cajun food. You ever got it? Yeah, spicy, it's a bit spicy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shit my pants for a week after that. Well, it's like for me, it just does it, and then I I'm ready for this explosion out of my ass huh. that happens okay. afterwards, and then it's over with. It's and that's like, it. It doesn't keep going. No, because it's like one <laughs> eruption. <laughs> It doesn't trickle out afterwards. <laughs> Mine's more like an episode of, you yeah. know, a series. a series of events of volcanic yeah. eruptions. Well, if you always live the diarrhea life, then the diarrhea life is just normal. It's like you oh, always okay. eat spicy gotcha. food. Yeah. You're always you're shooting it out of your it. ass. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. you're just like, and you carry wipes I just around. Have to train my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just. <laughs> but. <laughs> I don't know. I like I, I got into like doing we do like chicken and steak and then rice and then yeah. vegetable bowls things good. a lot. Yeah. And so like I've done steak a lot, but we started cutting them up in cubes and making like little steak bites and then yeah, put them in like good. bowls of rice and shit. And it's like I don't want to dump a one sauce in my yeah. rice and all that. So like if you can if create you like cooked, a thick. Sorry, I keep in your, if you just cooked it. All in one slab. It's way the fuck juicier than cubing it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it is hundred yeah. percent. Um, you wouldn't need a one because you would have uh, sauce and the meat. Uh, the problem is that like I like a one sauce more than I like the steak food. Oh, so, gotcha. And of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but shittier sweet. Baby Do you Ray's, have good like yeah? Sweet if you want to sponsor me, I've gone through more <laughs> sweet baby rays than anybody. Do y'all have like any good barbecue joints that's kind of trickled on into like over here from like Kansas City and uh, stuff? We've got a Hickory Hut that's pretty good for real. Yeah, that's uh, one thing I'm like very interested good. in. Is yeah, uh, like it's it's really good. Their baked beans are absolutely fucking mind blowing. Nice. Best thing you've ever had in your life. You just shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> they don't peanut know gallery back there. No, it's amazing. I, you would dig it. Kansas, like I, I, I've never been through Kansas City, so like I'm, I'm very interested in like the, uh, the barbecue. I don't of that, uh, just the style of it. I right? like really wet barbecue. I like juicy. I do I like fucking. So is like it kind of dry rub it's more stuff dry here? Dry stuff. Oh, I don't, okay. That's not my thing. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You ever got? Man, see, you're not in the hot. Man, I was gonna say you ever gotten like Nashville hot chicken type thing. No. No, I'm into that shit, no, dude. No. I want to so. taste my food and eat it without exploding out my asshole. What is it? So what kind of taste do you like? Zest? Mm, I like zest. <laughs> lemon? Um, lemon? <laughs> I like, uh, no, I eat a lot of sriracha and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it's a quick spice chili uh-huh. that goes away. You know, it's, yeah, it doesn't yeah. hang on. It doesn't, yeah. It's not like you mean. some crazy hot peppers that 30 minutes later I still can't eat my meal. Agreed. Yeah, I like flavor hot, not like same. Same. Like I'm not. I'm not trying to like burn every no, in and out no. spot, right? Nope. Um, but I do like spice. I like a. I don't know. Like I'm. I'm an over pepper user. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I like all that. Huh? Yeah, I'm down. We're probably in the same category. Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're both pretty fair skinned people. I think we're. You know. <laughs> same level of spice. <laughs> we both turn the same amount of red after we eat it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, no, I, I've, I've, uh, you know, honestly, man, some of the best steaks I've had in my life, and this might say a lot about where I eat steaks at, but have been in like <laughs> beach towns up and down the coast of huh. California and Oregon. Yeah. At really? bars, at bars, dude. Really? Like okay. dive bars. It has like a, you know, almost Dirty, like greasy a, ass grill. yeah, dude. Huh. And then you get a okay. fucking perfectly cooked steak out of there, and you're like, God damn, this is I'm all right Crescent with that. City. Yeah. I had one of the best steaks of my life in there, and it was hmm. seventeen, maybe eighteen yeah. bucks. Okay, and I've done the whole Vegas thing with the fucking tomahawk hey, and shit. Good, yeah, and I don't know. Okay, maybe because they also served a one with it. Eh. <laughs> 
<laughs> do you do you cut it into it and take a bite before you put an A one so you know how your steak tastes before you dip it? Yeah. Well, like, okay. Let me let me that. be fair. Let me be fair. I always I always cut I've my had, meat up and try it before I if dip if it. if you go to a place that creates some kind of glaze or s- like yeah, yeah, even sauce. like a, a buttery kind of yeah. thing on it, I can eat that straight. Okay. okay. I just can't eat dry ass meat. No, I hear you there. You know what I mean? You can't do it. There's a fuck. We were somewhere. We were somewhere. I can't. Damn, where was that? Anyway, I think it was Vegas actually. And I've had one really expensive steak in Vegas. I didn't yeah. pay for it. Okay. Uh, someone else did. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like it's more of a spectacle than it yeah. is like a delicious meal. And then I we were somewhere else there where they like. If I go to a, like, you know the difference between, like, a real chef sure, versus, sure. like, right, yeah. something else. Like, you go to a real chef, and, like, they usually have, like, a glaze or something right. of course. on it. So, you don't really need steak sauce. But right. I've always told people, like, look, when you're getting your steaks at Chili's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Applebee's. Right, right, obviously. And if you want to go <laughs> expend some money, go to right. Texas Roadhouse and get yeah, a steak. Yeah, right. I'm gonna need some A1 sauce on They're there. They're fucking rolls, though, man. Yeah, exactly, Those are dude. Good. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? There's like a caveat right. that I try of to course. tell everybody. He's like, look, of course. Yeah. you know, you can pepper the shit and salt the shit and garlic the shit out of these things, nope. but, you know. You gotta have some sauce. Sweet baby rays. Sweet baby rays. Yep. Have you, uh, I mean, you were in Austin. You must yeah. have did some barbecue oh, down yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was your gen- joint? Place. Do you have one? Um, fuck, I don't know. I mean, I just kind of sampled all over the place. I didn't find any of them that blew me away. Yeah, same though. Same. I didn't, it was good, but I wasn't. I didn't. Yeah. I, same. Like I've no know, reason to go back to that one. I went around. There, I, some of the barbecue joints in Texas that I've actually fell in love with were not the famous ones, yeah. but they're just more the consistent ones that's been there forever. That makes sense. You know, yeah. and also like there's something about a line to eat food that I'm not okay with. Yeah, yeah. I I'm just, I'm not no. really that. I had more, um, you know, Mexican food that I yeah. absolutely fucking blew my mind than, than barbecue. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. The one thing that was a, a culture shock for me when I went to, started going to California a lot was some of the best food I've ever had out of a truck. Yeah. Some of the worst food I've ever had out of a building. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Food yeah. trucks that are really fucking yeah. good, huh? Best tacos I ever had in my life was in Stockton. The, the, the food truck heading, it's through Rio Vista heading uh, towards Stockton. It's like right at a gas station on the left hand side. I, I didn't do that. Uh, the only thing in Rio Vista we ever had was this like steakhouse that was like on the water oh, kind yeah, of thing. It was there. pretty good. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then. The best tacos I've ever had in my life to this day, and I hate giving <laughs> California credit for this, but it was on Alpine Way and Wilson Way in uh, in Stockton. And I, I was going there for like a year, and then like I went away. Uh, I, I didn't come back out for like a, a couple of months. Yeah. Came back out, and apparently the dude got too many DWIs. <laughs> and he was done. Drinking oh, beer, dang. cooking the food oh, and shit. shit. And ended up taking his whole, all his shit away or something oh, like that. No. And uh Best tacos I've ever had. And then I went to San Diego, like, earlier, earlier this this past <laughs> year. And everyone was talking about how great the tacos were down there. And they took me to the most basic shit <laughs> I've ever had in my life. And I think that people in California sometimes forget that Texas has more Mexican border than they do. Right, right, right. And we have a huge, you know. Uh, the Mexican food is out of this world. Yeah, and, and I was like. Amazing. It was the most amazing food I've eaten. Well, I, I mean, I, think, I shit nonstop like a goose, yeah, like from a man, like sun up to sun down. <laughs> but I enjoyed it every time I yeah. ate something. Well, it was we, worth it. We have Tex Mex in Texas, which which kind of overshadows like the authentic Mexican food that's there. But yeah. I don't know. Like if we're talking street taco to street taco, yeah. like I I've Unreal. I have had the best tacos ever in California, but since then I have not. It's been in Texas. So, and I'm open to there you go. new shit straight there up. There you go, Texas. You know, <laughs> fuck, I don't know. Dude, I'm hungry now. <laughs> this is the best reason, to, only reason to go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm starving too. What are we going to eat? I don't know. Y'all got some good spots? We can go to Chuck's. They got okay. pretty good food. Got All beer. Right. They got food. Well, shoot. I Strip guess we club. Could... Ch- at Chuck's? <laughs> <laughs> he owns it. He owns that one too. 
Chuck's the shit then, huh? <laughs> Need to have him on the podcast. Hey, Chuck. <laughs> so, when'd you get your start? <laughs> it was a fifteen hundred dollar loan for my grandma. <laughs> I had one trick. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, All fuck right. it. Let's go eat. Well, hey man, I appreciate right. you doing this. Absolutely, it's, hey, I it's appreciate been a showing fun up day hanging out with you. Middle y'all. of nowhere. Yeah. Uh it's on the way to something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the way to something. What well, is? you got a great presence online, yeah. and because yeah. of your efforts uh, online, you, you, I mean, you, I found you. Like I didn't, you know, I found your bike, man. Your yeah, bike's amazing, yeah, yeah. and like, regardless of what part of the country it was built in, it's sure. the work is there and it's craftsmanship. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I guess we all have to pull our women from California because they don't know that they seems got that there, way. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess they just don't make them like that out of where we're from, huh? Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a California vibe, though. <laughs> yeah. I've been there for 20 years. Yeah, so you're, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I appreciate it, man. That was yeah, just fun, I, man. I appreciate it, too. Yeah. I hope the best for you guys and, uh, you. you know, hope to see you some more shit and just stuff like sure. that. So, all right. Well, hey, tell everybody where to find you, like in the, you know, online and shit like well, that. All um, those. Basically, Schmidt Motos, mm-hmm. um, S C H M I D T underscore Motos. Uh, is my Instagram, and that's kind of my main thing. Yeah, that's really, all you need, man. That's it. Yeah. And if they follow you there, they can see, like, when you start to kind of produce sure, these sure. products, yeah. that it'll be exactly. available. Yeah. Um, SchmidtMotos at gmail.com. It's my email. And yeah. Yep. I'll Hit put me a up. picture of something you've done on there. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah, right, right. on. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks a lot. Yo, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really appreciate you watching and listening to the podcast. And if you enjoy this type of content and you want to support the page, support the brand, support the pod, go to the link in the description, the Patreon. That's where you can join our community and help us create more of these awesome podcasts and get some unreleased content while you're at it. And don't forget to check out all our sponsors. There's a lot of great offer codes to save you guys some hardcore cash on products for your bike and for you as a rider. So check it out and we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Peace.